Higby Embroidery. Uniforms tonight, Rams in the all gray. Fairview in the black tops with a gray pants. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. David Frank weather forecast tonight. Holy smoke, she couldn't ask for a better day in Northwest Ohio for the middle of April. Here on April 13th, it's 81 degrees out here at Fairview High School and really not a cloud anywhere in the sky to be seen. A little bit windy, winds blowing from left to right about 15 miles an hour. Setting the lineups for both teams tonight. For the visiting Snow Rams, Aiden Mosier will be leading off and playing in right field. On the mound tonight is Caden Radzik batting second. Batting third, Alex Shoblin. He'll be your DH for Eli Plosman. Batting fourth, Taryn Ward will be at the hot corner at third. Batting fifth, got to remember to anchor down papers as they're going to blow everywhere here tonight. Uh, batting fifth is Luke Harris at shortstop. Batting seventh behind the plate, Dalton Wolfram. B.J. Morlock will be at first base. Connor Wolfram will be in right field. And Grady Gusweiler will be batting ninth and playing in center field. For the host, the Apaches, which Coach Singer changed the lineup on I mean, the last second. So I got a bunch of scribble marks here. Leading off center field, Adam Lajoy. Batting second at second base, Colton Schooley. Batting third in left field is Brevin Williams. Batting fourth on the mound. Or no, no, actually, they switched that one up too. Batting fourth is Eli Schinniger. Schinniger is in right field. So he's actually at nine, not one. Justin Grine will be on the mound for the Apaches. Going to have the playing of their national anthem. Anthem. So we'll just run down Fairview again. Lashaway leading off in center, batting second. Colton Schooley at second base. Batting third, Brevin Williams in. Brevin is playing in a left field. Batting fourth, Eli Schinniger in right field. On the mound, batting fifth is Jackson Ryan. Batting sixth, June Schinniger at third base. Batting seventh, Abram Schinniger. Batting. Actually, he's batting seventh. Batting eighth is Bailey Schooley. He is at. They have two third basemen, so we'll just wait to see whoever turns around first and we'll get their number. <laughs> and batting ninth is Elijah Aaron. So thanks for joining us here on this Thursday. Both teams one and one in the GMC. <laughs> Grind on the mound. Schooley behind the plate. Eli Schinniger at first. Schooley at second. Aaron at short. And at third for the Apaches. The June Schinniger. Outfield. Williams in left. Lashway in center. And Abram Schinniger in right. For the Rams. First three hitters be Aiden Mosier, Caden Radzik. And Alex Shoblin. Shoblin's a DH. Rams coming in, batting three, 
88 as a squad with a 6-1 and one record start for their first defeat versus Wayne Trace on Tuesday over at Wayne Trace. Two unearned runs in the bottom of the first inning was all that Winslick and the Raiders needed to defeat the Rams. Ryan on the mound comes in at 1-0, 15 innings pitched, allowed 7 hits, walked 8, struck out 25. .93 ERA, he's allowed 8 runs, 2 earned runs in his 15 innings of work. So almost 2 strikeouts an inning for Jackson Grind. Where's number 24 on his black jersey with the gold trim. A little bit windy here, as you can hear in the background. I have everything anchored down, taped down, and stuff is still going to blow away, I assure you. I'm trying to get the net that's in front of me. Got a little weight on it, so I'm trying to weigh that down so nobody at home gets dizzy trying to watch. But it's the best view that I have is right behind the backstop, right behind the... Uh, concession stands here. Thank goodness they're not grilling tonight. We were over here two years ago and they had brats and dogs and burgers grilling behind me and had to smell that all evening long. <laughs> Aiden Moser steps in for the Rams bats from the left side. Brian on top of the hill as my stats go flying, of course, like I said. Winds it up. First pitch. Ball one. 458. First pitch. 81 degrees on your David Frank weather forecast. Brian, long look in. Gets the sign. Comes to the plate. That one's high and away. Ball two. Mosier up on the count. Two balls and no strikes. Schooly behind the plate for Coach Singer. Mosier, seven stolen bases for the Rams early on. 2-0 pitch to Mosier. Strike one called. Ryan winds it up, his 2-1 to Mosier, swung on and missed, strike two. Two balls, two strikes. Just underway here at the reservation over at Fairview. Fairview High School, no score. A couple minutes before 5 o'clock, early start. Ryan winds it up, his 2-2 two -two to Mosier. Tapper, foul, comes up and hit Mosier in the side of his helmet. Luckily he didn't hit him in the side of his noggin there. Well, if you can tell, for those of you trying to watch, that it's actually turf on the base paths and around home plate, but the infield itself is still the old school dirt out there, which is the discoloration from dark brown to light brown. Mosier taps it back to grind off his glove. He recovers, throws over, not in time to get the speedy Mosier. One hopper back to grind. Well, it wasn't a line shot by any means. I think his initial reaction was to hurry up and get the glove up there because most of the time that ball comes back at you rather hard. And it hit off his glove, bounced to the third base side of the mound. Time he scooped it up and threw over, Speedy Mosier was across the bag. So Mosier with seven steals is on at first base. Grind going to work from the stretch. Mo Caden Radzik steps in, batting 316 on this young season. First pitch to Caden. There's a strike. I think I should have brought more tape. We're 417. Caden's batting 417, my apologies. Bozier, big lead at first. Grind from the stretch, comes to the plate. Pitch to Radzik, low. Count evens at one ball, one strike. Pittsburgh Sioux, we know you're watching as always. Morlocks, I think, are watching as well from Kansas. Or Kansas City, one or the other. The other watching from Missouri or Kansas. So thank you guys for tuning in. Pittsburgh Sioux says her mom and she has other relatives in Florida that watch as well. So thank you all guys for tuning in. Throw over to first base. Mosier 
almost was leaning the other way, scampered back just ahead of the throw and the tag. No score here, top of the first inning. Mosher on at first. So he gave an error on that play. Dan did upstairs, Mr. Dan Hash. 1-1 one, one pitch to Radzik, high and away, ball two. Talk to Dan, wherever I, talk, wherever I see anybody when I come over to Fairview, I wind up talking to Dan for, it seems like half an hour. I was like, Dan, I gotta go get set up. I could talk to Dan forever. Fantastic statistician over here at Fairview High School. Runs the GMC site. 2-1 pitch coming to Radzik. There goes Mosher. It's pitch, it's called a strike, I believe. Throw is high. Mosier down the second base with his eighth steal on the season. Count to Caden is two balls and two strikes. Razik, six RBIs on the season, so he's got a runner in scoring position with nobody out. Top of the first inning here. Mosier, big lead is second. Ryan from the set looks back at second, comes to the plate to Radzik. Radzik swings, drills it deep. Right field over the head of the right fielder. Mosier hits third. He rounds the bag. Radzik hits second. He's going to hold on there. Mosier crosses the plate for the first run. RBI double for Caden Radzik. Puts the Rams up. 1-0. The line drive out there to Abram Schinniger in right. Kind of took a step in. And with the wind blowing as strong as it is from left to right, sailed over his head. That's what I was saying, Dan gave <laughs> Aiden Mosier an error on that first play, but I gave him a hit, so I'll have to discuss that with Dan afterwards. <laughs> Just kidding. Alex Shoblin steps up with the runner scoring position. First pick to Alec is a check swings called a strike. Shoblin steps in. He has four RBI on the season, along with a 364 average. Razzik leads away from second. Grind steps off. Rams up. one nothing. <laughs> anyway, I should have bought some heavy-duty tape or weights or something. <laughs> I should have learned. <laughs> oh, one pitch to Shoblin is up and in. Count evens. One ball and one strike. Shinniger... Even with the bag at third, Radzik leads away from second. Grind from the stretch, comes to the plate. Shoblin squares around the bunt, pulls the bat back. Pitches ball, ball two. Two balls, one strike, nobody out. Rams one on the board with an RBI double by Radzik. Radzik is second. Trying to add a second run here with Shoblin at the plate. Count two. Alec is two balls and one strike. Ryan Long look in, finally gets the sign from Schooley. Comes to the plate. Shoblin again squares around the bunt. Bunts at first base side. Grind off the di off the mound. Throws over in time to get Shoblin, but a sacrifice is successful. Going down to third base on the sacrifice is Caden Radzik. So that's the first out. Small ball by Coach Renolette, as always, is going to bring up Taryn Ward. Ward leading the team in RBIs with seven. Batting 364 is Taryn through seven games. Runner a third now with one out. Grind from the stretch, looks at Radzik a third, comes to the plate. Pitch outside. Ball one. Nice stop back there by Schooley. Bailey Schooley, senior. Like I said, if you're looking for a schoolie and Tim Brook and Shinniger reunion, you come to the right spot. There's about seven or eight of them on the fair view. I wouldn't expect anything less. Tim Brooks, of course. Pitch to Ward, outside corner, strike called. One ball, one strike, one out. Rams with a one nothing lead. Still batting here in the top of the first inning. Rams, when they head out there, will send Caden Radzik to the hill. Pitch coming to Taryn Ward. Outside corner. Called strike. One ball and two strikes. Now the count to Taryn Ward. Runner in scoring position. No, 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 I joke. With the runner at third for Taryn Ward. 
<laughs> Ryan gets to sign his one two pitch to Ward. That's high. Hit. Two balls and two strikes. And of course, my camera is zooming in on the safety fence, so it's not actually zooming in on the batter, so you're going to high def fence view here. 2-2 two -two pitch to Ward, swung on and missed. Ball's in the dirt, it's going to be an out. So Ward strikes out for out number two, Radzik remaining at third. Luke Harris going to step in. Harris leads the team in hitting with a 4.29 average for Luke. Heck of a year all around for Luke. Basketball and baseball is four. Dalton Wolfram on deck for Tenora. Grind from the stretch comes to the plate. Pitch to Harris. Swung on and missed. Strike one. Coach Renolette coaching at third. At first is Reed Anders. Long look in. Krein gets the sign. Oh, one pitch coming to Harris. Swung on and missed. Strike two. Tip, fall tipped into the gloves, says the umpire. Krein's similar build and stature and not quite as fast as Winslick from Wayne Trace on Tuesday, but he's not far behind speed-wise. Go okay. to pitch coming to Luke Harris. Strike three called. Harris caught looking. That ends the Rams. Top of the first inning. They had one run. Thank you. They did so on, I'm saying two base hits myself. No errors. And one runner left on at third. After a half inning of play here at the reservation over here at Fairview High School, seats so Nor Rams one and the Fairview Apaches are coming to bat. The Adam Stevens Body Shop is your number one voted auto collision repair facility in Northwest Ohio. We have recently built a brand new state-of-the-art 20,000 square foot body shop along with a 2,500 square foot addition to our paint shop. This includes a brand new eco-friendly paint booth that is top of the line. At Bat & Stevens, we use the latest and newest technology the industry has to offer. We are your experts on all makes and models of vehicles and are the only Chrysler, Ford, and GM certified collision repair facility in Northwest Ohio. Give us a call today at 419-497-3111 to schedule your free estimate or stop by and visit us in downtown Jewel, Ohio. Bat and Stevens Body Shop would like to wish all teams good luck this season. Back at Fairview High School, Rams scored one in their top half of inning number one. Had a runner at second with one out. Actually had a runner at third with one out. Back to back strikeouts for Grind killed the threat for the Rams defensively said Caden Radzik will be on the mound. Don Wolfram behind the plate. B.J. Morlock will be at first. Eli Plasman at second. Luke Harris at short. Karen Ward at third. Outfield-wise, Aiden Mosier is in left. Grady Gusweiler is in uh, center. And in right field is Connor Wolfram. B.J. Morlock's at first, if I feel the mission. And Alex Shoblin is at D.H. Caden Radzik, seven innings pitched thus far here in 2000. And 23. Radzik. Heck of a game. His last outing has one win. Allowed two runs, no earned runs. Three hits, has walked two and struck out. Two has not. She said no earned runs, so his ERA is currently a 0. 0.00. .00. Four. The Apaches. Flashaway, Schooley, and Williams will be your first three hitters. Being off for Fairview, center fielder, number seven, Adam Lashaway. Adam Lashaway, 387, and has scored 11 runs. Radzik winds it up first pitch, a little bit high, ball one. Fairview, five and four, one and one in the GMC. Radzik gets a sign from Dalton Wolfram. His 1-0 pitch, check, swing, strike. One called to leadoff hitter Adam Lajue. On deck is Colton Schooley. 
One one pitch. This has been a little bit outside. Two balls and one strike to Adam Lashaway. Rams lead one nothing here in the bottom of the first inning. Beautiful day over here in Sherwood, Ohio. Two one pitch coming to Lashaway. That's low off of Wolfram's glove. Ricochets into the Rams dugout. Picked up by Alex Shoblin. Fires it back to Ratchet. Three balls and one strike to count to Adam Lashaway. Radzik with an RBI double in the first inning, giving the Rams a 1-0 lead. Radzik gets to sign his 3-1, coming to Lashaway. Swung on, hit right back through the box. Harris scoops up the high hop, throws across in time to get Lashaway. Hits a lip of the grass, I think, out there. Came up to Harris's left shoulder. Cut the glove on it and put it away. Nice play out there for shortstop tonight. Luke Harris, 6-4 on the putout. Colton Schooley is going to check in. Schooley, 393 with 10 RBIs on the season. Going to bat from the left side. Schooley is senior. One of, I believe, seven seniors on the Apache squad. First pitch by Radzik. A little bit low, ball one. If every day could be like this in Ohio, we'd be in heaven. We'll see what it feels like to live in Arizona every day. <laughs> no humidity, no clouds. Pitch inside, two balls and no strikes to Colton Schooley. 81 degrees on your David Frank weather forecast at first pitch. A little breezy, but it's all right. Radzik. Winds it up. It's 2 0 pitches. High and away ball three. Schooley. Let's work the count to three balls and no strikes. Brevin Williams on deck four. Coach Singers, Apaches. Razik works from the first base side of the mound. Winds it up. 3 0 pitch. Inside ball four. Schooley going to trot down to first base with a one out walk. Brevin Williams steps in, 462 for Brevin. Scored 12 runs and has 12 RBIs. Brevin, a junior, that's from the right side of the plate. Throw to first base back safely is Schooley. Colton Schooley, that is. Four schoolies on the team. Pitch gets away from Wolfram, goes to the backstop. Hustles back there to scoop it up, but not before Schooley goes down to second base on the wild pitch. Now, Schillingers, there's one, two, three, four of those as well. So we have eight. Coach Rowlett going to come out, talk to Dalton Wolfram. Not sure if Dalton got injured on that play. Didn't seem like there was anything out of the ordinary, but. Runner a second, one out. Rams on top, one nothing. Bottom of inning number one here. Radzik from the set. Williams at the plate, long look in. Radzik looks back, comes set. Pitch, strike called to Brevin Williams. Wolfram going to go out and have a little conversation with Radzik with the runner at second base. Maybe he's going to change up a sign or two. Schooley with a one-out walk went to second base on a wild pitch. One ball, one strike to Brevin Williams. One out here. Rams up one nothing in the first bottom of the first inning. Radzik's pitch. Strike two called. One ball, two strikes to Brevin Williams. Eli Schinniger is on deck. I think there's some schoolies on the JV off the look in between innings. 
one-two pitch from Brevin Williams, or to Brevin Williams, just a bit uh, inside. Count evens at two balls and two strikes. Apache's threatening to tie the game at one. They have a runner a second with one out. Two two pitch from Radzik. He sets, looks back at the runner a second, comes to the plate. Strike three called. Williams caught looking, goes down for out number two. Those are the Rams fans on the first base side. Hopefully brought a little sunscreen over there, Mr. Harris, Mr. Plasman. Who else is over there? Oh, well, everybody. Now on our side, a little bit in the sun, which is good. Schinniger steps in with the runner a second. Two out now. Check swing. Another ball in the dirt. This one goes to the third base dugout. Wolfram dives into the dugout trying to save it because if that ball goes into the dugout, that's going to be an extra base, and that would allow the runner to score. So nice hustle by Dalton Wolfram to save that from going into the dugout. So moving up to third on another wild pitch is Schooley. Count to Schillinger is one ball and no strikes. Two outs. Runner at third for the Apaches. That's Colton Schooley. Eli Schillinger digs back in from the right side. Radzik sets. His 1-0 pitch. Stays a little bit high. Two balls and no strikes. We have sunscreen needed on the first base side. And some of the, the uh, third base side. 2 0 pitch from Radzik. That one's high in a way. Still there. Wolfram dashes up to grab that one. Plasman worked on Tuesday along with Castile. Plasman just worked an inning and a third. So we like possibly would have some innings in him. 3 0 pitch from Radzik. That one's outside, ball four. So Eli Schinninger trots down the first base, second walk of the inning. He's going to put runners at first and third. And the person you don't want to see will be coming to the plate, Jackson Grind. Grind, 421. Has, just hate to say, just seven RPIs a season, but an intimidating figure like Grind, you just tend to pitch around a bit. Radzik looks at the runner at third, comes set, pitch to grind. Strike one called. Rams with a run in the first inning. RBI double by Caden Radzik, put the Rams on top. Patchy's threatening here to tie it up. Runners at first and third with two out. Jackson Grind at the plate. June Schinniger on deck. Pitch by Radzik. Check swing by Grind. Count evens at two ball, or one ball and one strike. <laughs> Rams and the All Grays. Beautiful look designed by Mr. Jim Garris, BSN Sports. 1-1 one, one pitch, strike two call on the inside corner to grind. I said in the pregame, whenever these two teams get together in any sport, you can throw out the records, it's just quite the battle. Football, basketball, baseball, softball, Lady Rams playing next door there, the Apaches. Heck of a game over there as well. Ramsick comes set, one, two to grind. Swung on, fouled off third base side. Count stays at one and two with two outs. Runners go back to first and third. They got it. One nothing Rams as the Apaches are threatening to tie it here in the bottom of inning number one. Rams off tomorrow, and I don't think there's a game Saturday. It says TBA on the schedule, but I don't think BR has a game schedule as far as I know. One, two pitch. Hits second base side. That's going to be a RBI single in the right field. Wolfram up with it, throws the ball in. Ball comes through the third. Schinniger beats the throw. That's an RBI single by Grine. So Grine ties it up at one on. The smash between first and second. Schinniger hustled all the way over to the third for the Apaches. We are tied at one. I could have watched softball just as easy. 
June Scheniger steps in the number six hitter. Scheniger batting 308 has eight runs, four RBIs for June. Throw over to first base, back safely as Grind. Runners at the corner still for the Apaches. After the RBI single by Grind. Abram Scheniger on deck. Pitch high in the way. One ball, no strikes. I think Hunter Bosselman's going to go down and start to get loose in the Rams bullpen. 1 0 pitch from Radzik outside. Nice stop by Wolfram. Two balls and no strikes to count to June Schinniger. Rams with already one in GMC loss, and one one loss is all you're going to get this season because unless the Wayne Trace Raiders stumble, they're not going to lose a game this year in the conference. Two balls, no strikes. Plasma can come talk to Radzik. He's back to his position a second. Schindiger digs in from the right side. Razzik comes set. 2-0 pitch. Swung on and missed. Strike one. Two balls, one strike, two outs. We were tied at one here in the bottom of the first inning. Patchy's threatened to add more. And the runner's at the corners. Grind at first. Eli Schindiger at third. June Schindiger at the plate. Abraham Schindiger on deck. Pitch is just a bit low. Three and one. The count to June Schinninger. I know. Bailey Schooley is on deck. Throw over. Grind back just ahead of the tag. Safely at first. Nice crowd over here at Fairview. Softball diamond probably has just as many. 3-1 pitch from Radzik. Up and in. Ball four. That's going to load him up. Ryan goes down to second. June Schinniger down to first. That's the third walk in the inning for Radzik. Number four, Abram Schinniger. Abram Schinniger will step in. June on at first. Eli at third. Grind on at second. Schooley on deck. Timeout on the field. Assistant coach, Mr. Eric Tipton, is going to go out and have a conversation with his starting pitcher, Caden Radzik. <laughs> Radzik thus far. 27 pitches, just 10 strikes. Thanks for joining us here on Sonora Rams Line. Keith Tornado Rams Live. Keith Brown with you. Make sure you get your reverse raffle tickets. Reverse raffle is this Saturday at the Ridgeville Legion. $50. That gives you a meal. And I believe it covers all your drinks as well. Unconfirmed, but I believe that's the case. Just make sure you bring a lot of cash. Tip the fantastic bar staff. And play some of the fantastic games and auctions that the boosters have to offer. Bases full of Apaches, game tied at one. Radzik comes to the plate. Pitch. Hello. Nice stop by Dalton Wolfram. Saved another run. Abram Schinniger, and that's going to be it for Radzik. Coach Renolette has seen enough. We're going to take a timeout. We'll be back with the pitching change, and we'll do it right after this timeout. Back to the action. Are you tired of losing money on your 401k or other retirement accounts? Well, you're not alone. Do what many area residents have done and call Postoma Insurance and Investments. With safe money strategies offered to you by PI&I, you can still have the benefits of market earnings without the risk of taking market loss. Sound too good to be true? Give us a call and with experienced agents at PI&I will work with you to understand how you can do just that. If you're more interested in CD-style accounts but are fed up with low CD rates, PI&I agents can set you up with an account with rates currently as high as 5.5%. 
25% fixed with certain restrictions apply. Call us today at 419-782-2500 to help you set up a plan that meets your investment goals. That's 782-2500, Postima Insurance and Investments, protecting everything you've worked for. Okalona Tavern, located in downtown Okalona, is the home of the famous Oki Tavern Wings. Stop in after the game and get some delicious wings, burgers, fries, onion rings, and enjoy a nice cold beverage while talking about the game. Hours of operation are Tuesday to Sunday, opening at 4 p.m. Check out the Okalona Tavern on Facebook for a menu before you head out. Mexican food specials every Thursday and Sunday. The Okalona Tavern, a proud supporter of the Tenora Rams. Back here at Fairview, pitching change Hunter Bosselman will be on in place of Caden Radzik. Changes Connor Wolfram exits the game. Harris goes from short to right, and Radzik goes from the mound to shortstop. Bosselman checks into the game. Five innings pitched, five runs, one earned run. Hunter's allowed six hits, two walks. He struck out three, has an ERA of 1.40. So Radzik exes, exits the contest, leads the bases loaded. He's allowed one run. All the runners on base are his responsibilities. He can't win it, but Radzik can lose it. Checking in with a 1-0 count is Abram Schoeniger back in the box. Bosselman winds it up. First pitch, swung on. Drilled deep, right center field. That's going to hit the gap. That's... Going to score them all. Gus Wally up with the ball, throws it back in, but not before. Three runs plate. The Apaches lead 4-1. Colton Schooley scores. Eli Schinniger scores. Jackson Grind scores. And June Schinniger all score. So Eli Schinniger, Jackson Grind. And June Schinniger all scored on the Abram Schinniger three RBI double. To break this game open in the first inning, 4-1 Apaches. Bailey Schooley checks in. He's the eighth man to bat in the inning. He uh, swings at the first pitch, taps at third base side foul. So Radzik, his numbers are officially in the books. He's allowed four runs. All of those will be earned. Well, just one hit, unfortunately for Caden, just couldn't find the strike zone. Three walks, he struck out one, and two-thirds of an inning. Bosselman looks back at the runner at second, now steps off. As you can hear in the background, a little windy here at Fairview tonight. Bosselman's pitch in the dirt, another nice stop by Dalton Wolfram. <laughs> Wind blowing left to right. The times pretty stiff. One one pitch coming to Schooley. Swung on. That's drilled into left field. Down the line it goes. That's going to score. Abram Schinniger rounding the bag at first, heading to second for the stand-up double is Bailey Schooley. Five one Apaches. Keep going. Eli Aaron is going to step in. So Elijah, just a freshman, comes the number ninth or the number or the ninth batter to bat here in the inning. He swings at the first pitch, taps it to Taryn Ward. Long throw by Ward, just in time to get the speedy Aaron at first base for out number three, five three on the put out for the Apaches. They do some damage in the first inning. They bat around, send nine men to the plate. They score five runs. They do so on three hits. No Ram errors, and one runner is left on base. After one inning of play over here at Fairview High School in your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard, Fairview five and Tenora one. 
Looking for an opportunity where you can grow your career, be appreciated, and be an owner where you work? Did we say owner? Yes! Mech is an employee-owned company that is highly motivated and actively supports the communities in which our facilities are located. Mayville Engineering needs you. Mech is an employee-owned business where our focus is on our customers' success. Mech has been named the nation's number one fabricator for 12 consecutive years in a survey published by the Fabricator magazine. Join the Mech family today. Full and part-time positions are available. $1,000 sign-on on bonus, 401k, vacation and holiday pay, gain sharing program, employee stock ownership, medical, dental, and vision insurance, short-term and long-term disability, and shift premiums for second and third shift. Visit our website, mechinc.com. Click on careers or visit the 21 Seneca Street lobby at the Defiance location. Over here at the reservation at Fairview High School, Rams they got a lot of work to do. They trail by a score of 5-1 to one as they come to bat here in the top of the second inning. 6, 7, and 8, Dalton Wolfram, B.J. Morlock, and scheduled to hit was Connor Wolfram. So that should be Hunter Bosselman. Connor started the game in right, exited the game when Hunter Bosselman came on to pitch. And Caden Razik went to short. Luke Harris went from short to right field. Which is why Connor more than likely will not get in the bat here. So Jackson Grind, who gave up a run in the first inning, Rams were threatening to add a second run, had a run at third with just one out, could not score. His teammates come back with a five spot to give him a four-run cushion at five to one. The catcher, number six hitter, Dalton Wolfram steps in. Wolfram, 391 on the season. Ryan winds up his first pitch to Dalton. Strike one called. Eighty-one beautiful degrees over here at Sherwood Ohio School. Sherwood High School, Fairview, Fairview High School in Sherwood, Ohio. <laughs> Strike to Dalton. No balls and two strikes. Ryan, long look in, gets the sign. Oh, two pitch coming to Dalton. Swung on. Little blooper left field. That's going to fall in. Aaron went out. He couldn't get there. Williams was coming in. He couldn't get there either. So Dalton Wolfram is on with a leadoff single. It's going to bring up B.J. Morlock. B.J. digs in from the right side. Junior playing at first base for head coach Brett Renolet. Well, from short lead at first, grind from the set comes to the plate. Pitch to Morlock is inside. Ball one. Burton O'Jenna tuning in. Out of town. Watching Tory, I believe. I'll play volleyball if I remember seeing that right. So, Thanks for you guys for tuning in. Grind from the set. Runner at first. Pitch. Morlock. Little tapper. Third base side. Third baseman comes on. Throw over to first base. Just in time to get Morlock. Nice play over there by June Schinniger to retire Morlock. Down to second on the fielder's choice. Went Dalton Wolfram. So Morlock's retired 5-3 on the putout. Hunter Bosselman going to check in. I don't actually have Hunter's batting stats available because, like I said, that was Connor's, Connor Wolfram's part, part in the order, which I have all his numbers down. <laughs> so Bosselman took over for Wolfram in the Radzik pitching change. First pitch to him was a strike. I can try and get him without the everything blown away here. I'll do so. Bosselman, 263 through seven games. Runner at second. Grind's 0-1 pitch. Outside off the glove of the catcher. Schooley down to third base. Alertly goes Dalton Wolf, and the ball didn't really get that far away. Rolled to the first base dugout, the Rams dugout. Wolfram on his horse. Got down to third. One ball, one strike to Bosselman. Ryan from the set looks at Wolfram at third. Comes to the plate. Swung on, fouled back. One ball and two strikes to Hunter Bosselman. 
Hunter has six RBIs on the season. 19 at bats, five hits for Hunter. Hunter just a sophomore. Down on the count, one ball, two strikes to Jackson Grind. Wolfram leads away from first, or third. One, two, two, Bosselman. Swung on, little tapper, foul. Scooped up by Rams head coach Brett Redolette down there at third, like he did when he played over here. Not sure if the field was over here when he was at Fairview High School. Can't, I can't remember back that far. <laughs> <laughs> One ball, two strikes, two Hunter Bossom. One Bossom one digs back in. Wolfram back at third. Grinds one, two pitch to Hunter. Swung on, drilled deep right field foul. One hops the fence down there at the 305 mark. 305 down the lines here at Fairview. 340 in the alleys. Five one Apache's lead is the Rams bat here in the top of inning number two. Runner at third for Tenor Dalton Wolfram. Just one out, one two count from Grind to Bosselman. That's low. Count evens at two balls and two strikes. Schooley scooped it up there. Save the pitch from heading to the backstop. Ryan, long look in, finally gets the sign. 2 2 pitch coming to Bosselman. Just a bit low, ball three. Count goes full at three and two. <laughs> Rams with a few days off of gameplay after tonight, I believe. No action tomorrow or Saturday. 3 2 pitch coming to Bosselman. Swung on, fouled back. Awesome one stays alive. Count stays full at three and two. Grind set. Awesome one asks for time. He steps out. Grind 36 pitches through an inning and a third. He has 24 strikes. So he's got 36 pitches. Rams making him work. Through an inning and a third. Comes set. A full count pitch to Bosselman. Change up. Low in the dirt. Throw down the first base. Wolfram's going to take off. Come to the plate. Dives in. Head first. Catcher goes flying. Wolfram. Plates run number, run number two for the Rams. So Bosselman is... Struck out. That's out number two. They're saying, BR is down there saying that the first baseman wasn't on the bag. It's going to go over there and talk to the first base coach, but it's, you know, they never change this ever. So Bosselman struck out, swung at the ball outside. The ball trickled away from the catcher. Catcher. Schooley scooped it up, threw down to first base. First baseman came off the bag. Looked like from this angle. Threw the ball down to first base. In doing so, Dalton Warfer immediately jetted head first at home. Eli Schinniger down at first, fired back in to Schooley, and Wolfram went head first right into Schooley, up into the Schooley on top of him. 5-2 now. Rams trail by three. Base is empty. Number nine hitter Grady Gusweiler steps in. 357 for Grady. Third baseman in at the cut of grass at third. Pitch was a ball. Grinds 1-0 pitch to Gusweiler. No, no, no. Strike. One called. Count evens at one ball and one strike. Two outs. Rams have plated one here in the second. Got the deficit to three. It's 5-2 Fairview. Grind gets the sign from Schooley. Winds it up. His 1-1 one, one to Grady. Outside ball two. Yeah. 
2-1 pitch. Gusweiler rifles it. Nice play by the third baseman. Low throw over there, scooped up. Nice play by June Scheniger at third. Threw over there to Eli at first. Eli Scheniger in time to get to speedy Gusweiler. 5-3 on the putout. In the inning, Rams do play to run. And they do so with one hit. No errors, no Rams left on base. After an inning of third over here at Fairview High School, it is Fairview 5 and the Tenora Rams 2. Higby Embroidery of Defiance offers custom screen printing and custom embroidery to local high schools and individuals from all areas. Connie Higby and her staff have been serving and supporting Tenora High School as well as the Tri-County area since 1999. From throws to t-shirts to school jackets and much, much more, Higby Embroidery is here to serve your custom needs. Higby Embroidery also offers custom artwork if it is needed to complete your project. Higby Embroidery is located at 1940 East 2nd Street right here in Defiance, Ohio. Contact them at 419 419- 428-3000 or visit them online at Higby.com or Higby Embroidery on Facebook. If you are looking for a customizable item, Higby Embroidery is your place. Higby Embroidery, a proud sponsor of the Tenora Rams Live Player of the Game Award. Back here at Fairview High School in Sherwood, Ohio. Apaches with a 5-2 lead. The Apaches scored five in the bottom of inning number one after the Rams initially scored one run themselves. Nothing, nothing, Cheryl says. Thank you, Cheryl. It's a girls softball game. That's the top of the fourth inning, so they're zooming along over there. Next to us. Not so much here. Bottom of inning number two. Top of the lineup again. Breaking ball to leadoff hitter Adam Lajaway is a ball. Lajaway grounded to Luke Harris at short for the first out of the game. And then after that, Apaches were ready to roll and they did so. 1 0 pitch, a bit outside, ball two. Two balls and no strikes to Adam Lashaway. 1 2 and 3 to bat against Hunter Bossom. And Bossom will replace Caden Radzik after two thirds of an inning. Pitches follows the plate. Two balls and one strike to Adam Lashaway. Colton Schooley on deck for the Apaches. We said the Rams can not afford another conference loss. That would pretty much eliminate them from any GMC competition for his title for this year. Five straight titles for the Rams. Pitch is swung on, foul third base side into the Apache dugout. Count evens at two balls and two strikes. Possum one gets the sign. Junior the sophomore righty winds it up, fires, swung on, hit to center field. Gusweiler right there puts it away for out number one. Flashway retired by Grady Gusweiler. Then we have Colton Schooley. Schooley walked to start the Apache uprising in the bottom of the first when they were on the uh, warpath. <laughs> the rest of the first inning. Schooley bats from the, light, the uh, left side of the plate. Bosselman's first pitch. Outside, ball one. As we said, for those just popping in, this turf here at Fairview on the base paths and around the home plate area. Swung on and miss. Count evens at one ball and one strike. The infield is grass, and then the infield part on the base path, or the, the where the fielders are at, is dirt, and it's a grass outfield as well. Strike two called one ball, two strikes now to the number two hitter, second baseman Colton Schooley. Base is empty. 5-2 Apaches, 1-2 pitch, 2 Schooley, Tapper off the glove of Bosselman. He picks it up, third base side of the mound, no throw. Schooley draw is going to get a one-out single off the glove of Hunter Bosselman, similar to the Playing the first inning, Jason Grindhead. Ball comes back at you. You think it's coming back at you faster than what it is. You get your glove up there. Most of the time, you squeeze your glove, and the ball hits your glove and trickles off, which it did in this instance. So 
Schooley is on at first with a one-out single. Brevin Williams steps in. Williams got caught looking for out number two in the first inning. So before that uprising by the Apaches, they had one on with two outs before the bottom fell out for the Rams. The pitch was a ball. Bosselman looks over at the runner at first. Colton Schooley comes set and to the plate. Pitches fouled back by Brevin Williams. Count evens at one ball and one strike. One out. Apaches leave 5-2 as they bat here in the bottom of inning number two. Thanks for joining us here on Tenora Rams Live. Keith Brown with you. See everybody Saturday at the reverse raffle. 1-1 one, one pitch, swung on and missed. Off the glove of Wolf and he fires down to first base. Morlock slaps the tag on Schooley. Schooley back safely just ahead of the tag by BJ. Williams back in the box. Eli Schindinger on deck. 1-2 pitch from Bosselman to Williams. Low in the dirt. Nice stop by Dalton Wolfram. I think Dalton's a wrestler. You know what I mean? <laughs> he used to bop his body all over the place because he saved about six or seven wild pitches here. And we're just in the second inning. 2-2 two -two pitch from Boston when he sets. There goes the runner. Pitch again low. Stolen base. No throw by Wolfram. He didn't have a chance because the ball again was low. So Schooley down to second base with a stolen base. Count goes full to Brevin Williams. Bosselman looks back at the runner. It's second, comes to the plate. Full count pitch is just a bit low. Brevin Williams draws a walk. That's going to put Apaches at first and second. Number 35, Eli Schindiger. Eli Schindiger is going to dig in. Number four hitter. Pitch to Schindiger, breaking ball, straight called. When game changer stopped working, they wonder why I looked down and phone needs a charge. I'm about to plug it in. So my game changer will work again. 0 oh, 1 pitch from Bosselman. Swung on. Hit yeah. into left field for a solid base hit. That's going to score a run. In with the sixth run for the Apaches is Colton Schooley. That's an RBI single by Eli Schinniger. Brevin Williams hung on at second. So Schinniger is on at first. Brevin Williams is on at second. Jackson Grind will step to the plate, but not before head coach Brent Ronalette is going to make a visit out to the mound to talk to Hunter Bosselman. Caden Razick started and went the first two-thirds of an inning before he was replaced by Bosselman. Said the Rams burnt Plasma and Castile Thursday or Tuesday at Wayne Trace. Eli couldn't eat some innings, but because he pitched just an inning and a third, not sure how many that <laughs> Eli actually pitched. Pitch wise. Go too far. Jackson. All right, trying to reset my game changer there. Hopefully that does work. Grind digs in. Grind with an RBI single in the first. Has more ducks on the pond as the Apaches lead 6-2 as they bat here in the bottom of the second. Runners lead. Swung at the first pitch. Little shallow fly ball to left field. Mosier camps under it. Puts it away for out number two. Big out there. Jackson Grind flies out to Aiden Mosier in left. Runners hold. Brevin Williams is second. Eli Schinniger at first. It's going to bring up June Schinniger. Number five, June Schinniger. Come on, June. Oh. 
primes with five or five four based on balls here through the first inning and two thirds. Six runs, five hits, one error for the Apaches. Two runs, two hits for the Rams. Swung on at miss. Mr. Hash gave the Apaches the error. I did not. I gave, I gave him a hit. Same play when Fairby was up, they got a hit. Oh, one pitch. Breaking ball inside corner. Stays a bit inside. Count evens at one ball and one strike. Two outs. Apaches have scored one. Have a four run advantage. Six to two as they're still batting here in the second. Long walk in by Bosselman. 1-1 one, one coming to Scheninger. Swung on and missed. Strike two. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Two runners on for Fairview. They lead 6-2 to two as they bat here in the bottom of inning number two. Cheryl says last I saw was no score for the girls, Tenora and Fairview. 1-2 pitch for Bosselman. Swung on, fly ball to left field. Foul ball out there. Roger Chase could not get there. Runners go back to their bases. Count stays one and two. June Scheniger, 308 on the season. Eight runs and four RBIs. He digs back in. Abram Scheniger on deck. Bossman's one, two. Swung on. Hitting the gap. Gusweiler going back. Nice running catch in the right center gap by Grady Gusweiler to retire. June Schinniger for out number three. He gave it a ride. Gusweiler, one of the faster guys in the GMC, caught up to it. In the inning for the Apaches, they had another run for run number six. They do so with two hits, no ram errors. The Apaches leave two on. After an inning and a half here at Fairview High School, the Apaches six and the Rams two. Have your hair and nails gotten out of control over the past few months? Cut and Polish Salon of Defiance is your local salon to get all pampered up. Cut and Polish Salon offers a vast range of quality services, including haircuts, highlights, specialty coloring, waxing, manicures, and pedicures. Please schedule a visit at their fun, relaxing salon where you can be sure that all of your hair and nail needs are a top priority. Cut and Polished Hair and Nail Salon is located at 413 Hopkins Street in Defiance. Be sure to book your appointment today by calling 419-576-5087 or do your booking online by visiting their Facebook page. Cut and Polished Salon says, remember, it's all fun and games until someone breaks a nail. Cut and Polished Salon is a proud supporter of Tadora Rams Live. Back at Fairview High School, 6-2 Apaches lead. Rams here on the top of inning number three. Going to send the top of the lineup. Mosier, Radzik, and Shoblin to face Jackson Grine. Grine, a little bit of trouble in both innings, has wiggled out of it. Gives a, he's given up two runs so far. Grine's pitched 41 pitches, 27 strikes. Cloud two hits, two runs. I say they're earned. Mr. Dan says they're not. He struck out three and is not allowed to walk yet. So Mr. Dan Hash runs the GMC website. One of the nicer gentlemen you, you would like to meet. Always likes to talk sports. And classic history sports. Does the PA here? Does the game changer? Does Fairview basketball stats? Come to Fairview High School. You've seen Dan in some way, shape, or form. <laughs> Mosier digs in. Mosier singled, stole the base, and scored on the Caden Radzik double in the top of the first inning, his first at bat. First pitch here leading off the third is in the dirt. Ball one. <laughs> Schooly behind the plate. Eli Schoeninger at first. This is, we'll set the defense after this for the Apaches. One oh pitch. Strike called. Evens the count at one ball and one strike. Aaron to short. June Schoeninger at third. Williams, Lajewey, and Abram Schoeninger left to right. 
in the Apache outfield. 1-1 one, one pitch is outside, ball two, two balls and one strike to Aiden Mosier. Mosier picked up his eighth steal in the first inning. 2-1, swung on and missed. Strike two, count evens at two balls and two strikes. Set on here, Chad, let's go. Base is empty, nobody out as the Rams back here in the top of the third inning, trailing by four, six to two. Grind winds it up. Yes, Tapper, third baseman, cuts in front of the shortstop, fires over in time. Nice play by June Schinniger to retire. Aiden Mosier for out number one. 5-3 on the putout. That's going to bring up Caden Radzik. Radzik roped an opposite field double over the head of the right fielder, Abram Schinniger, for an RBI double, which scored Aiden Mosier in the top of the first inning. Jason Grind, long look in, gets a sign from Schooley. He winds it up. First pitch to Radzik is called a strike. Four. Bailey Schooley, that is. I said you got to be, got to do first names here at Fairview, otherwise you have no idea who you're talking about. <laughs> no balls, one strike to Caden. That's in the dirt. Nice scoop by Bailey. Between Schoolies and Schinnigers, there's about eight of them. Abram Schinniger, June Schinniger, Noah Schinniger. One one pitch coming to Radzik. Someone on fouled back. First base side out of play. Schooley. Let's see, we got Colton, Bailey, Kaysen. Uh, there's another one there I'm sure I missed. <laughs> one two pitch from Grind to Radzik. Tapper. Second base side, second baseman scoots over there. Schooley scoops it up, fires over to Eli Schinniger to retire Radzik for the second out of the inning. 4-3 on the put out. Colton Schooley scooped it up. Gonna bring up Alex Shoplin. Alec, the sacrifice bunt. Sacrifice Caden Radzik over to third in the first inning. Radzik was at third with one out, could not score. Pitch to Shoblin, breaking ball inside corner, strike one called. Shoblin, four RBIs on the season. 364 for Shoblin. Grinds pitch in the dirt, gets away from Schooley. Count evens, one ball, one strike, two outs, bases empty. Rams trail 6-2 as they bat here in the top of inning number three. Still no score in the girls softball game, Cheryl says. <laughs> one ball, one strike, two outs. Joblin digs back in. Ryan gets the sign from Schooley, winds it up. His pitch, swung on and missed strike two. One ball, two strikes to Alex Shoblin. Reed Anders at first. And BR coaching at third for the Rams. One, two from Grind. That's high, ball two. Count evens, two balls, two strikes, two outs. Base is empty here in top of inning number three. Rams trail by four. Beautiful day over here at the Central Local School District, Fairview High School here in Sherwood, Ohio. About three miles outside of Sherwood, I would say. A little bit between Sherwood and Nay. Closer to Sherwood than Nay, for those of you unfamiliar. Count is a little bit, or the count, the ball is a little bit high and away. Count goes full, three balls and two strikes to Alex Shotland. Grinds 3-2 pitch to Shoblin. Swung on and missed. Strike three. Down goes Shoblin. 
Yeah. That one go with the Rams. In the inning for the Tenor Rams, no runs, no hits, no Apache errors. The Rams do not leave anybody on base. After two and a half innings over here at Fairview High School, the Apache six and the Rams two. Is your business looking for someone to take the day-to-day -day worries of your bookkeeping off your mind? Weber Bookkeeping Solutions of Defiance is here to help. With over five years of small business bookkeeping experience and seven years in banking, you can be confident that your books are in the right hands with Jenny Weber. Let Weber Bookkeeping Solutions handle the monthly tracking and reports so that you can focus on your business goals. Contact Jenny at 419-956-1273 and you can also visit her on Facebook or at WeberBookkeeping.com. BSN Sports, the recognized leader in team athletic gear. BSN forms partnerships with educators, coaches, and students to build school pride, student engagement, and community spirit. Our partnerships give you access to the most brand names in the industry with all of the hottest products at the best prices. From Nike to Wilson to Under Armour, we can customize any team needs. Since 1972, BSN Sports has brought you the brands that make you untouchable on the field, the court, or anywhere else you play your sport. Contact BSN local sports rep Jim Gares for any of your sports needs at 419 Five seven six six eight nine four. Here comes more Tenora Rams sports action. Back here at the reservation at Fairview High School. Six two. Apaches with a four run lead over the Rams. Seven eight nine for the Apaches here in the bottom of the third to face Hunter Bosselman, Abram Schinniger, Bailey Schooley, and Elijah Aaron. Will face Hunter Bosselman. Bosselman came on in relief in the first inning for Caden Radzik. First pitch. Yes. A little bit low and outside in the dirt. Ball one. Game just a bit over an hour old, about an hour ten minutes. 81 degrees at first pitch. Beautiful. Spring day here in Northwest Ohio. Pitch is swung on, grounded sharply to third base. Taryn Ward scoops it up, fires across yeah. in time to retire Abram Scheniger for out number one. Going to bring up Bailey Schooley. Schooley doubled in the first inning. That was a bases clearing double. He had three RBIs on the play. No, Schoeniger actually that did that. Abram Schoeniger is the one who cleared the bases. First pitch to Schooley. Strike one called. Bases empty, one out here in the bottom of the third. 6 2 Apaches. Pitch, breaking ball. Hit in front of the plate. Schooley was full. He steps out of the box, kind of chuckles about it as he looks down at Coach Sayer. <laughs> Quickly down, no balls and two strikes is Schooley. Schooley catching for Jackson Grind here. It's Elijah Ways in center field. Pitches inside for a ball. One ball, two strikes, one out. Here on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. <laughs> one, two pitch to Schooley. That's a little bit outside. Count evens, two balls and two strikes. Right next to the concession stands here at Fairview. They're doing quite the business. Like I said, a couple years ago, they had burgers and brats and hot dogs on the grill behind us. And boy, oh boy, we suffered for about two and a half hours with that. This fantastic smell. 2-2 two -two pitch, breaking ball, hits Schooley in the elbow. So he's going to trot down the first base with one out. Going to bring up the number nine hitter. Elijah Aaron. Elijah with a ground ball <laughs> to Ward in the first inning. It was retired by Taryn. Aaron just a freshman. Throw over to first base. Back safely with a head first dive is Schooley. Bailey Schooley, that is. Aaron batting 320. He's got six RBIs. 
pitch swung on hit deep in the short stop hole Radzik goes over there puts a glove on it can't make a play infield single for Elijah Aaron so that's going to put runners at first and second for the Apaches the top of the lineup Adam Lashaway Six runs, six hits for, or actually seven hits for the Apaches. Two runs, two hits. <laughs> Neither team has committed an error in my scorebook. <laughs> Pitch is low. Nice stop by Bosselman. Or Bosselman. Uh, Dalton Wolfram. Bosselman threw that one about two feet in front of the plate. Dalton Wolfram popped out and blocked that one. Runners did not advance. One ball, one strike to leadoff hitter Adam Lashaway. He is 0 for 2. <laughs> they have six runs on the board. Leans back Lashaway's ball two. Two balls and no strikes. To the Apache leadoff hitter. Came in batting 387 with 11 runs scored. Pitches outside, ball three. Thank you, Roger. Thank you, Pittsburgh Sue. Yeah, we need some out-of-state vibes, not a town vibes, to come through. Three-zero pitch, strike one called. Six-two Fairview is a bat here in the bottom of the third inning. They have runners at first and second with one out. Hunter Bosselman on the mound for the Rams. Pitch swung on, drilled in the gap in right center field. Harris out there catches it. Runner tags from second. He moves over to third. Luke Harris, nice running catch in the gap. For out number two to retire. Lajaway tagging up was Bailey Schooley going from second to third. The runner at first. Eli Aaron remains at first with two outs. Look for Coach Singer tried to steal a run here. Him and BR from the same booklet. Pretty much carbon copies of each other. So look for Aaron to break for second here. There he goes. Ground ball to Plasman. Plasman throws it over to Radzik for out number three. Forcing Aaron at second. So 4-6 on the put out in the inning for the Apaches. They do not score. They get one hit. No Ram errors. Apaches leave two after three innings over here at the reservation at Fairview High School. Fairview 6 and Tenora 2. We'll be back with more baseball right after this time out. Is your business looking for someone to take the day-to-day -day worries of your bookkeeping off your mind? Weber Bookkeeping Solutions of Defiance is here to help. With over five years of small business bookkeeping experience and seven years in banking, you can be confident that your books are in the right hands with Jenny Weber. Let Weber Bookkeeping Solutions handle the monthly tracking and reports so that you can focus on your business goals. Contact Jenny at 419-956-1273, and you can also visit her on Facebook or at WeberBookkeeping.com. Okalona Tavern, located in downtown Okalona, is the home of the famous Oki Tavern Wings. Stop in after the game and get some delicious wings, burgers, fries, onion rings, and enjoy a nice cold beverage while talking about the game. Hours of operation are Tuesday to Sunday, opening at 4 p.m. Check out the Okalona Tavern on Facebook for a menu before you head out. Mexican food specials every Thursday and Sunday. The Okalona Tavern, a proud supporter of the Tenora Rams. <laughs> Heading here to the top of inning number four at 6-2 Fairview. Cheryl says it's still scoreless. Top of the sixth inning between the Tenora Rams, Tenora Lady Rams, and the Fairview Lady Apaches over here at the softball field. Most times when you come to complexes, they're kind of right next door to each other. We're all over here at Fairview. I feel like it's about a mile away. I mean, it's literally not a mile away. It's where they're by the football field, so it's a couple hundred yards away from us over here at Fairview. But Rams got work to do, trailing 6-2 to two as they bat here in the top of inning number four. 
for the Rams. Four, five, and six. Ward, Harrison, Dalton, Wolfram to bat against Jackson Grind. Similar to the Tuesday game, Rams had chances in the first couple innings to score additional runs. It's put on two, put one on the first and one on the second. They just could not get any more on the board. Runner at third with one out in the first could not score. Terran Ward steps in for Tenora, struck out in the first inning. Ward, seven RBIs, batting 364, playing third base for Tenora, batting cleanup for head coach Brent Renolette. Thank you. Grind winds up his first pitch to Ward. Breaking ball with the knees. Strike one called. 749 wins on this field between head coach Brent Renolet and head coach Andy Singer. About 20, 40, uh, 43, 44 years of baseball coaching here. Ward lines it into the Rams dugout. Skipping his... Alex Shoblin and Trent Wimpkin over there. That was a rocket. No balls and two strikes to Ward. Trying long look in, gets the sign from Bailey Schooley, winds it up. Pitch, breaking ball, hit the shortstop side. Shortstop scoops it up, long throw over in time. Aaron throws it over to get Ward for out number one. Freshman Elijah Aaron, very impressive out there. He actually looks like he's about in the seventh grade. <laughs> Don't, I mean, if you would see him, he, do, he does not look like a high schooler. It's like, how did the seventh grader get to play? <laughs> but you start shortstop at the varsity level for Coach Singer, you've got to be very impressive, I assure you. I'm going to bring up Luke Harris. First pitch to Luke is in the dirt. Ball one. Harris, 429, leads the Rams. Struck out looking to win the first. Crying <laughs> winds it up. Pitch to Luke Harris. Strike called on the outside corner. Count evens at one ball and one strike. One one coming to Harris. Outside ball two. Two balls. And one strike to Luke Harris. One out. Base is empty. Rams trail by four as they bat here in the fourth inning. Check swing by Harris. Strike called. Two balls. And two strikes to Luke. <laughs> Crane gets the sign from Schooley, his 2 2 to Harris. Ground ball, second base side, deep into the outfield grass. Scoops it up, throws him out. Nice play by Colton Schooley to retire Luke Harris. 4 3 on the putout for out number two. First two Rams are retired. That's going to bring up Dalton Wolfram. Dalton singled and scored a run in the second inning for the Rams. <laughs> Ryan Long look in. Still looking. Finally gets a sign from Schooley. Winds it up. First pitch to Dalton Wolfram. Outside ball one. Ryan has 64 pitches, 42 of those strikes through three and two-thirds innings. Two hits, two runs, both of those are earned. Four strikeouts has yet to walk a batter. Grind's 1-0 pitch. Inside leans Dalton Wolfram back. Two balls and no strikes to Dalton. And thanks everybody for watching the screen and listening if you're listening online. Roger always tunes in. Throws a comment in every now and then, which we appreciate, I assure you. 2-0 pitch to Wolfram. Strike called on the inside corner. Count to Dalton is two balls and one strike. Two outs. B.J. Morlock on deck for the Rams. Dalton hammers it back through the box. Aaron dives, scoops it up, does not have a play. Nice play out there by Aaron again. Dove 
right in front of the bag at second. Time he popped up. Not, did not have a play for the speedy Dalton Wolfram. So Wolfram, with his second single, is on at first base with two outs. That's going to bring up B.J. Morlock. B.J. Morlock. B.J. grounded into a fielder's choice to the third baseman, his first time out. 5-3 on the putout. 6-2 Apaches here in the top of the fourth inning. Dalton Wolfram at first. Morlock at the plate. Crying from the set. Comes to the plate. Pitch to B.J. Outside strike called. Again, hello to the Morlocks watching. Halfway across America. Grinds 0-1 to B.J. Swung on, tap in the center field for a base hit. Going to put runners at first and second. Morlock with a tapper back over the head of Grind. Wound up in center field, so back-to-back -back singles by Morlock and Dalton Wolfram. Put the Rams with runners at first and second with two outs trailing by four. Hunter Bosselman, chance to help himself here. Bosselman on the mound for the Rams in relief of Caden Radzik. Two outs, two on, 6-4 Apaches here in the top of the fourth inning over at Fairview. Pitch to Bosselman's call to strike. Bosselman betting. Well, those are Connor Wolfram's numbers again because Connor was in the original lineup and actually played at the bottom of the first inning until Radzik was taken out. So I'll try and get Bosselman's numbers here. 0-1 pitch. Pitch goes to the backstop. That's going to allow Wolfram to round third. He's going to hold up there. Morlock round second. He holds up there. So Dalton's at third. BJ's at second on the wild pitch. Rams with runners in scoring position with two outs. A one ball, one strike count to Hunter Balsam. 263 for Hunter. Does have six RBIs to his name through seven games. Six and one. Rams come in tonight. One and one in the GMC. Fairview is five and four. One and one in the GMC. One ball, one strike. Pitch to grind. Bosselman, chopper second base side. Over there's a second baseman. Scoops it up in the hole. Again, a nice play over there by Colton Schooley. Throws out Bosselman to end the Rams' threat. 4-3 on the putout. The Rams threaten. They do not score. No runs for the Rams. Two hits by Morlock and Dalton Wolfram. No errors. Rams leave two on base. After three and a third innings over here at Fairview, it's 6-2. Patchy's on top of the Tenor Rams. Fairchild Family Chiropractic is happy to announce that Dr. Kayla is now accepting new patients. Long-term wellness continues to be our goal for families of Northwest Ohio. We help you achieve this goal by working closely with you and personalizing your treatment plan based on your needs. Come see Dr. AJ and Dr. Kayla at 100 Stadium Drive in Defiance or give them a call 419-576-5070 to schedule your appointment or book online at FairchildFamilyChiro.com. Dr. AJ and Dr. Kayla, proud members of the Tenor Athletic Boosters say go Rams. Maumee Valley Title Agency of Defiance has been providing seamless and transparent real estate closings in Northwest Ohio for 27 years. From contract to closing, their experienced team of attorneys and title agents work with lenders, businesses, and individuals to meet their real estate needs. Call the office at 419-782-3334 Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or visit them online at maumeetitle.com. Maumee Valley Title Agency of Defiance wishes all the Tenora Rams athletes the best this season. 6-2 Apaches as they come to bat here in the bottom of inning number four. Rams threatened last inning, had two runners on with two outs. Just could not get that timely hit. Rams back in action Monday, I believe. Maybe not. I don't know. I was trying to look at this, the schedule. Softball still tied 0 0 next door here. They play at Springfield tomorrow, which is kind of the home away from home for the Rams. Spent a lot of games last year at Springfield. Boys 
18. Baseball. I'm trying to bring it up real quick here. Again. Back in action. On. Yeah. One day they play weight. Tuesday at Edgerton. Thursday, home versus Hicksville. And Friday at Napoleon. Looking forward to that one. First pitch. Swung on. Drilled into right field for a solid base hit. Patchy's start. The fourth inning with a single by Brevin Williams. Eli Schinniger steps in. Eli walked and scored in the first single, an RBI single in the second. Possumman looks over the runner at first. Comes set. Throws over. Back safely is Williams. Wow. So everybody's getting chicken sandwiches here at Fairview. This will be a hot seller. Breaking ball low. Nice stop by Dalton Wolfram. President Williams stays on at first base. Does not advance. One ball, no strikes. To Eli Schinninger. One of the many Schinningers on the Apache roster. Not a throw over there to first base. Ball gets by Morlock. Goes down right field. Williams. <laughs> just stayed there and not sure why he did not advance. Ball definitely trickled far enough away for Williams to get the second. Schindiger back in the box on the right side. 1-0 -oh pitch to him. It's fouled back. Count evens. One ball, one strike. No outs. Bottom of inning number four. 6-2. Fairview on top. Kevin Williams with a leadoff single to start the Apache fourth. Jackson Grind on deck for Fairview. Possum into the plate, swung on, fouled back. One ball, two strikes. Now to Eli Schinninger. Okay. <laughs> One, two, pitch by Bosselman to the plate. Swung on and missed. Throw down the first base. Back safely as Morlock slaps the tag on Williams. So Schinniger strikes out for the first out here in the fourth inning. Grind steps in. RBI single in the first. Flew out to Mosier in the second. Come in hitting 421. Seven RBIs on the season for Grind. <laughs> Bosselman's breaking ball pitch. Strike called to Jackson Grind. Still scoreless. Top of the seventh inning. Girls softball next door. That's a huge game. That's kind of a similar situation here. The winner there, pretty much in control of the GMC. Grind drives it deep. Foul left field. Almost like we wish we have a monitor here so we could check in on the girls softball game as well. Rasisa pitching for Fairview. Heck of a heck of a heck of a matchup over there as well. Between Skyly Zolman and Paige Rasisa. No two pitch. There goes a the runner. Pitch is fouled off into the Fairview dugout. Count remains no balls and two strikes. It's the daughter of 1988 graduate from Sonora High School, Bobby Racisa. Bobby's had quite a few kids, girls, come through over here the last three or four years. I'm very talented, every single one of them as well. No balls, two strikes, one out runner at first. Williams leads away. Throws over. Warlock slaps a tag on him back safely as Williams. Grind at the dish. 
But it's an effective game if you ask Jackson. Probably not his best outing, but he's taking it. They lead 6-2. to two. That's all he can ask for. <laughs> Swung on and missed. Ball gets away from Wolfram. That's going to put Grind on at first base. So a strikeout for Bosselman. Grind reaches safely on the wild pitch. Down to second base goes Brevin Williams. Oh, I guess, yeah, that's right. So he is out. First base was occupied. So strikeout does count because first base was occupied by Williams. Williams went to second on the wild pitch. Grind is out because the base was full of a, of a runner. If that had not been the case, and Williams had moved up on that pad or that error to throw at first base, Grind would have been safe. But instead, that's out number two. That's going to bring up June Schinniger. First pitch to June is a strike. Williams is now at second for the Apaches. Leads away. Plasman goes over there. Now back to his position goes Eli. Pitch to the plate. Ball two. Abram Schinniger awaits on deck for Fairview. 6-2 Apaches lead here. Scoreless on the softball diamond next door. Bosselman's 2-0 inside corner. Strike called. Two balls, one strike, two outs. As the Apaches bat here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Not a cloud in the sky here in northwest Ohio over here at Fairview High School. David Frank weather at the first pitch was 81 degrees. 2-1 pitch, just a little bit inside. Count goes to 3-1. I said we'll see everybody Saturday night at Ridgeville. If you haven't got your tickets, please do. Get with a booster member or a coach or a kid on a, on a team. They all got tickets. Pitches high and away, ball four. So June Schinniger trots down to first with a walk. Where is that first and second for the Apaches? Two outs. It's going to bring up Abram Schinniger. Schinniger with a huge bases clearing double in the first inning with two outs to give the Apaches a 5-1 to one lead at the time. Bosselman wheels, fakes a throw back to second. No throw. Plasma was back there to cover the bag as Williams dove back into second base. On deck is Bailey Schooley for the Apaches. Abram Schindiger digs in. First pitch, breaking ball by Bosselman's call to strike. <laughs> Abram digs back in, bats from the right side. Bosselman long looking, gets the sign from Dalton Wolfram. Comes to the plate. Check swing. Actually, it's a full swing. It was an ugly swing because <laughs> Coach Singer would agree. No balls and two strikes. He'd think he tried to hold up. Didn't realize he couldn't. Then just continued with the follow through. So Abrams down on the count. No balls and two strikes. Runners on first and second for the Apaches. Here in the bottom of the fourth inning with a four-run lead the Apaches have. 0-2 oh, pitch, strike three called. Bosselman catches Abram Schinniger looking. That's going to end the Apaches' fourth. Fairview in the inning. No runs. Apaches get one hit. No Ram errors. They leave two on base after four innings over here at the reservation at... Fairview High School, just outside of Sherwood, Ohio. It's six to two on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard. Patchy's lead by four. Drop Zone Pizzeria in Ayersville and Stryker offers the area's best pizza, wings, subs, and calzones. In fact, Drop Zone Pizzeria was voted the area's best pizza in 2020 and again for 2022. From pickle pizza to pilot bread to grandma pizza, Drop Zone Pizzeria is always looking outside the pizza box for something special for their fantastic customers. Order by calling in Ayersville at 419-395-2525 or in Stryker at 419-990-2525. Hours of operation close Monday, Tuesday 
through Thursday and Sunday, 4 to 8 p.m., Friday and Saturday till 9. Drive Zone Pizzeria now with two locations, downtown Ayersville at 13995 Fruit Ridge Road and also at 301 South Defiance Street in downtown Stryker. Stop in at the Stryker location for a bite of ice cream. Visit them on Facebook at the Drop Zone Pizzeria where online ordering is available. And remember, the Drop Zone Pizzeria says go Rams. 6-2 Apaches. Still hold that four-run advantage. Apaches with five in the first, one in the second for their six. Six runs, eight hits, no errors for the Apaches for the Rams. One run in the first. Another in the second. Rams, two runs, four hits, and they do not have an error here on this Thursday evening at Fairview. If every day, as I said earlier, if every day in Ohio could be like this, we'd be in heaven. Eighty degrees here in Sherwood. A little breezy. Breeze is blowing from left to right. Pretty solid at times from 10 to 15 miles an hour, but not a cloud anywhere. As for those of you watching on Facebook, at least the best you can through the net. Every time I come over here, I try to do the best I can as far as the, the net. Just there's no way around it. There's no opening for, my, for me to put the camera. I try to anchor it down so it won't blow as much. I have a little little tie down here, but it's still with the velocity of the wind at times. still blows the safety net back and forth. For the Rams, 9, 1, and 2. Gusweiler, Mosier, and Razik to face Jackson Grind. Grind said not his best game, but definitely effective. First pitch to Grady. Check swing, ball goes to the backstop. Gus Weiler, 0 for 1, grounded to third base in the second inning. Brian gets a sign from Bailey Schooley. Pitch coming to Gus Weiler. His 75th pitch. Ball two to Grady. Ryan, 74 pitches, 48 strikes through four innings of work. Missed most of last year, the knee injury. Grind did. 2-0 pitch going from Grind to Gus Weiler. Check swing, strike call on the outside corner. Two balls and one strike to Grady Gus Weiler, the Rams center fielder. Brian nods. I'll take that pitch, he says, from Schoolies. 2-1 pitch to Gus Weiler. Breaking ball, strike two called. Grady, if they could give gold gloves in baseball, he would have one, I assure you. There's number 25 on his traveling gray. Hunter Green with the white outline. 2-2 two -two pitch, swung on, fouled back. Count stays, two balls and two strikes. Nobody on for the Rams. Nobody out. They trail by four. So they bat here in inning number five. Uh, Round of baseballs. The umpire's like, I need more balls. Trying <laughs> 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 to catch some area scores here if I can. Hard to find baseball scores. Football. We do our games on Friday. You can get every score in the world you want. You try and find a baseball score. It's uh, rather difficult at times. <laughs> Pitch to Grady stays high. Count goes full at three balls and two strikes. Harrisville softball picked up a win versus Paulding. They don't have a score, just says they won. 3-2 pitch to Gus Weiler. Swung on. Fouled it off third base side. Coming over there to make the play is Fairview right fielder Brevin Williams. So Gus Weiler is retired in foul territory for the first out by Williams. F7 on that put out. It was one nothing. Fairview, or Fairview, Ayersville defeated Paulding one nothing. That's in baseball. That was 20 minutes ago. So that must have been a... That game was just over an hour old. An hour and 15 minutes. One hitter by Abe Delano. 
Peyton Mosier steps in here for the Rams. First pitch to Aiden is called a strike. Mosier singled, scored a run, stole the base in the first inning, grounded out in the third. Picked up his eight steal earlier. That was in the first inning. Ryan's pitch to Mosier, ground ball, second base side, first baseman goes over there, scoops it up, can't make a play, ball pops out of his glove. Eli Schinniger over there in the hole, put the glove down, scooped it up, but the speedy Mosier legged it out for an infield single. So Mosier's on it first with one out. Going to bring up Caden Radzik. Radzik, an RBI double in the first, grounded to second base in the third. Headed to the bottom of the seventh inning. Still scoreless in softball next door. All that from Crescent News. Rosisa and Zolman over there. What a battle. Mosier leads away from first. Grind fires over there. Back safely is Mosier. Count to Radzik is one ball and no strikes. Pitch to Radzik is inside. Spins him out of the way. Ball two to Caden. But that's about it. I can't really find too many other scores. Two old pitch leans Radzik back. Count to Caden is three no. Well, thank you, Carol. Appreciate that. But Cheryl's keeping us on top of as best she can. So thank you, Cheryl. Brief timeout on the field. Third baseman gonna go in and have a brief conversation. June Schinniger. Goes in and talks to Jackson Grain just to give him a little bit of a breather, I think, more than anything. So a 3-0 count to Radzik. Mosier on at first. Rams trail 6-2 here in the top of the fifth. Grain from the stretch is 3-0 pitch coming to Radzik. Hits him and actually somehow it missed him. It went between his legs. So Radzik's on at first with a walk. Mosier down to second. Coach Andy Singer is going to go out and talk to his hurler, Jackson Grind. Grind with 86 pitches here in the fifth inning. There's one out. Rams with runners at first and second. Alex Shoblin will dig in. Coach Singer still out there with his, with his entire infield. Going over what they want to do to Shoblin. Shoblin sacrificed in the first, struck out swinging in the third. Huge opportunity for the Rams to get back into the contest as they trail six to two here in the fifth. Sorry. <laughs> yes, come join. Us Saturday night. If you're not doing anything at the Tenora Rams Athletic Boosters raffle at the Ridgeville Legion, dinner and drinks, 50 bucks, and a night, night of fun. If you've never been to one of those, or if you have, you know what I'm talking about. It's uh, very entertaining. Sure, yeah, you got a lead off double. Every lady Apache's got a lead off double. And Zolman left the runner stranded at third. Scoreless after seven from Mr. Shane from the Crescent News. Runners lead. First pitch to Shoblin, drills it opposite field. That's going to head to the wall. Right field side hits the 305 mark. Moser scores. Radzik's going to score. Shoblin. No. Ball gets away. Radzik gets safe. That play was a lot closer than I thought. Shoblin with an opposite field double. Scores Mosier, then Radzik. I didn't think that they had a chance to get Radzik. Six to four. 
Rams with a runner in scoring position with still one out. Gonna bring up Taryn Ward. Ward, 364, seven RBIs coming in. Struck out in the first, grounded to short. Heck of a play in the fourth inning by the Apache freshman shortstop, Elisha Aaron. Oh, thank you, stuff. <laughs> I tried to catch some of it, but. <laughs> Pitch to Ward, swung on, fouled back. Perfect chance here, base hit. Could just possibly score another run, get the Rams within one run. They trail by two, here's here six to four. One in the first, one in the second, two here in the fifth. They're still batting. They have a runner at second with one out. Taron Ward at the dish. No balls in, one strike. Long look in from Grind. He gets the sign. Looks back at Shoblin at second. Comes to the plate. Ward takes the pitch. A little bit high. One ball and one strike. Yes, anybody on Twitter, as stuff has, if you're if you're not actually on the Facebook commentary, you can go to Twitter and Shane from the Crescent News is giving updates on the Lady Rams softball game. Like Cheryl, but Shane gives a little more frequency. Obviously, Cheryl's busy doing two things, three things, four things at once there, but we appreciate everybody's updates. Pitch to Ward is fouled back. One ball and two strikes to Taryn. On deck is Luke Harris. Schooley finally gives a sign to Grind. Grind actually still looking. Still looking. Ward says, I had enough of this. Let me step out. So Taryn steps out. One ball, two strike pitch to Ward. Swung on and missed strike three. Huge strikeout for Jackson Grind and the Apaches. Runner at second, two outs. Now it's going to bring up Rams, well, was starting shortstop Luke Harris. Harris then moved to right field once Radzik exited the game on the mound. Harris struck out looking in the first, ground out to second in the fourth. Shoplin still out there a second, leads away. Harris digs in, bats from the right side of the plate. Grind over 90 pitches. Harris asks for time as Grind just sets there and waits. Looking for a sign from Schooley. Grind from the set looks back at Shaolin, comes to the plate, pitch to Harris, breaking ball, strike called. No balls, one strike to Luke Harris. Rams got back in it here. Scored two, trail by two, at the top of the fifth. Grinds pitch to Harris, a little bit low and outside. Count evens at one ball and one strike. Grind to the plate, Harris. Smashes it inside the bag at third. Shoblin hits the bag at third. He rounds it. He's going to head home. Harris, big turn. He stops there. Rams have cut it to six to five on the RBI single by Luke Harris, scoring Alex Shoblin from second. So you have Coach Singer looking for him to pop out of the dugout any second here, and I have yet to see Andy. Dalton Wolfram's going to step to the plate. Dalton singled in the score to run in the second. Singled in the fourth. Dalton is two for two. Come in batting three, 91. Rams backstop doing a heck of a job here tonight. Behind the plate as well. Behind the plate and at the plate by Dalton. Harris at first, grind from the stretch, comes to the plate. Pitch to Wolfram is outside, ball one. Can't see the Fairview bullpen down there. I'm sure, I would assume there's activity as grind, like I said, approaching 100 pitches. 95 pitches for Jackson. Two outs. Rams trail six to five. Here in the fifth, they have played it three. Throw over, Harris dives back there. Ball gets away. Heads down the right field line. Harris hits the bag at second. He's gonna go all the way to third with no throw. Harris is at third base on the throw down to first base that eluded the first baseman. Eli Shiniger 
So Harris, a tying run at third. A wild pitch. This ties the game. Hard to believe. Six hits, five runs allowed by Grind. Five earned runs in my book. <laughs> Pitch to Wolfram as high and away ball two. <laughs> two balls, no strikes to Dalton Wolfram. Harris at third is the tying run. Ryan sets, comes to the plate. Wolfram takes the pitch inside, called a strike. Yes. That's when he thought the Rams were left for dead. Lifeless tra trailing six to two. They come alive for three here in the inning. And still batting. Two one pitch to Wolfram. Swung on and missed. No, it's a, it's a pop up actually. Catcher comes out and catches it in foul territory for the third out. He lost track of the ball. Looked like he swung. It was a swing and missed in the dirt. So it looked like to me, but Wolfram actually popped it up. Catcher Schooley popped out from behind the plate and caught it a couple of feet inside the foul territory down the first base side. But the Rams get into it. They get three runs here in the fifth inning. They do so on two base hits. One huge error. One Ram left on base. After four and a third innings over here at Fairview High School, it is six to five. Fairview leads by one on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. Fired Stone Tavern in Defiance is anything but basic. In 2021, the Fired Stone Tavern was voted to have the best pizza in the area. Now, in 2022, they've been voted as the best burgers around. Fired Stone Tavern is the area's go-to for wood-fired pizza, amazing appetizers, and so much more. Chef Aaron and his staff are here to serve nothing but the best. No plans after the big game? Stop out for ice-cold drinks and all the games on TV you can ask for. Our back room and patio are available for events like birthdays, corporate lunches, parties, and much, much more during the week with a 25-person minimum. Located at 211 Carpenter Road at the Eagle Rock Golf Course, the hours of operation are Monday through Friday, 2 p.m. to 11 p.m., and Saturday and Sunday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Give the Fired Stone Tavern a call, 419-785-4015, or order online at firestonetavern.com. Firestone Tavern wishes the best to all the Tenora teams. Here at Fairview High School, Rams with three in the fifth. Got right back into it. They trail by one at six to five. Five runs, four hits, no errors for the Rams. Or five runs, five hits, no errors for the Rams. Six runs, seven hits, and one error for the Apaches of Fairview. Hunter Bosselman still on the mound for Tenora. For the Apaches, be the bottom part of the lineup here. Should be Schooley, Aaron, then the top, Lashaway. Schooley singled in the first, was hit by a pitch in the third. So the backstop for the Apaches, Bailey Schooley, digs in, bats from the right side of the plate. Still no score into the eighth inning, Lady Rams and Lady Apaches. Softball. First pitch to Bailey Schooley is a ball. Pitch swung on and missed. Bosselman, 59 pitches, 39 strikes. That was the 60th pitch right there. 39 strikes for Hunter. One ball, one strike to Bailey Schooley. Bases empty, nobody on for the Apaches here on the bottom of the fifth. Pitch sails all the way to the backstop. A little brick backstop here, which I think at one time, still probably in the the works, baseball team wanted to do something like this. <laughs> Scuff up a lot of baseballs when it hits that backstop. 2-1 to Bosselman to Schoolies. Low ball three. 
Last thing the Rams want to do is give up a run or two here after they just scrape back into it. Trail six to five here in the fifth. Pitch is a strike. Three balls and two strikes. Count goes full to Bailey Schooley. Game just short, a little bit short of two hours old. Full count pitch to Schooley. Bosselman's pitch is way outside. Heads to the backstop. Wolfram chases it back there. Schooley trots down the first base with a leadoff walk to start the Apache fifth. Timeout. That coach Brent Renolette heads to the mound, and that's probably going to be all for Hunter Bosselman. Hunter, 65 pitches, 41 strikes. Pitched three in the third innings of relief. Two hits, two runs, two earned runs. Struck out three and walk three. So that's going to be it for Hunter Bosselman. We're going to see Eli Plasman. We'll be right back with the changes. <laughs> and tell you all about them right after this. The Law Office of Wiener Hill, Weber & Stanley is a full-service law firm dedicated to providing quality legal services in defiance in all of Northwest Ohio. Since 1965, their attorneys have had a well-deserved reputation of excellence in serving clients with a focus on integrity, advocacy, and understanding. At Wiener Hill, Weber & Stanley, we are a general practice law firm that can handle all of your legal needs. We offer high-quality legal work and personal client service, and each of our attorneys is committed to providing you with top-notch legal support. Attorneys Jim Wiener, Danny Hill, Cam Stanley, and Ian Weber are here to assist you. Give them a call at 419-782-3010 or visit them online at wienerlawoffice.com. The law office of Wiener, Hill, Weber, and Stanley is a proud supporter of the Tenora Rams. Maumee Valley Title Agency of Defiance has been providing seamless and transparent real estate closings in Northwest Ohio for 27 years. From contract to closing, their experienced team of attorneys and title agents work with lenders, businesses, and individuals to meet their real estate needs. Call the office at 419 334 Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or visit them online at mommytitle.com. Mommy Valley Title Agency of Defiance wishes all the Tenora Rams athletes the best this season. Back here at Fairview High School, 6 5. Apaches lead by one. Coming on in relief is Eli Plasman. Plasman taking over for Bossaman will become the third pitcher to work. Harris comes in from right field to second base. So Luke, back in the infield, started it short. Bosselman goes out to right. 6-5, Apaches lead by one. One in the first, for Tenora, one in the second. Three in the fifth. Fairview's plated five in the first. And one in the second for their sixth. Rams trailed 6-2 to two as they headed to the fifth. Got three. Had the tying run at third with two outs. Could not get the run home. Alex Shoblin headed down to the bullpen for Tenora. As we said, Plasman worked Tuesday at Wayne Trace. Pitched an inning and a third. First pitch by Plasman. To the freshman shortstop, Aaron does this ball one. Runner at first, nobody out. Aaron squared around the bunt, brought the bat back. Plasman from the stretch looks over at Schooley at first. Pitch to Aaron is called a strike. Ball got away from Wolfram. Not enough for the runner to advance. You got it. Plasman looks over at Schooley at first. Gets the sign from Wolfram. Looks back at Wolfram. Now throws back over to Schooley. Or uh, try to get Schooley at first base. Warlock slaps the tag on him, but he's safe. Elijah Aaron at the dish. One ball, one strike. Plasman throws back over to Schooley again. <laughs> Warlock puts a tag on him, but he's safe. Warlock, Harris, Radzik, and Ward on the infield. Scores around the bunt, bunts it back to Plasman. Plasman scoops it up, only plays at first base. High throw. Uh, Morlock puts the tag on the runner. Runner advanced to second, made a wide turn. Morlock threw the ball down to Harris's second. Schooley 
it literally didn't get too far off the bag, dove back in safely. So Aaron with the sacrifice is out number one. Get Schooley down to second base. That's a huge run out there. But the Apache's leading by just one now, six to five. <laughs> Top of the lineup, Adam Lajaway. Lajaway, oh. 0 for 3, had three at bats in the first three innings. Grounded out then two consecutive flyouts. First pitch by Plasman to Lajaway is a ball. Pitch is drilled deep over the head of Gus Weiler. Yeah. Gone! Lajaway with a two-run homer here in the fifth inning. Yeah. Gives the Apaches an eight to five lead. That scores Schooley. Here comes Lashaway. Lashaway saw the first pitch from Plasma and served it deep. Over center field, Grady Gusweiler's head for a two-run home run. Eight to five. Apache's lead here as they bat in the bottom of the sixth. Cold Schooley digs in the number two hitter, second baseman. 393 for Schooley, bats from the left side. First pitch, swung on and missed. Strike one. <laughs> Pitches of all, ball two, two balls, one strike, one out, base is now empty. Two huge runs for the Apaches. They lead eight to five here in the bottom of the fifth. Plasman's pitch swung on, fouled back somewhere. Here comes Dalton Wolfram. Could not make the play right in front of you here. I like Wolfram got back in time. I think the wind pushed the ball back towards the infield and Dalton came back to the fence. And by the time he got to the fence to make sure he didn't crash into it, the wind pushed the ball back over his head and he could not recover. One ball, two strike pitch. Inside behind Colton Schooley. Two balls and two strikes. Two Schooley. Brevin Williams awaits on deck. Plasman winds up his 2 2 to Schooley. Swung on. Fouled first base side. Plasman over there can't make the play. Plasman off the mound. Hustled over there. And foul territory between home plate and first base. Put the glove out there. Came up a little bit short. So Schooley's he's got like a, he's like a cat here. He's got nine lives. Two balls, two strikes, one out to Colton Schooley. Schooley, two runs scored. Plasman's pitch just a bit inside. Count goes full at three and two. Walked and scored in the first. Singled, stole the base, and scored in the second. Grounded out in the third. Three, two from Plasman to Schooley. Ball four. Schooley trots down the first base with a one-out walk. Gonna bring up Brevin Williams. Williams struck out in the first, walked in the second, singled in the fourth. Twelve RBIs for Brevin Williams. Playing in left field. Plasma steps off. <laughs> Schooley trots back to first base. I just had to wait for my opportunity. There you go. There you go. The whole day? Bottom of the ninth. No score. <laughs> Lady Rams in. Well, Lady Apaches. Wow. What a duel. Isn't that the Derby? Here it's 8-5. Fairview. Rams cut it to 6-5. to five. Flash away with a two-run homer. Here in the bottom of the fifth. Plasman's pitch. Strike called. Count two. Brevin Williams is one ball and one strike. Eli Schinninger on deck. Schooley on it first. Williams at the dish. Plasman. 
from the set. 1-1 one, one pitch. Outside ball two. Radzik started, went two-thirds of an inning. Bossom won one an effective three and a third. Plasma not in relief. 2-1 pitch, way outside. Dalton Wolfram pops out from behind the plate. Snags it, three balls, one strike, one out. Patchy's batting here in the bottom of the fifth, leading eight to five. Timeout, home plate umpire is going to head over there to the Rams dugout. <laughs> Barking something in there too. <laughs> Somebody. <laughs> VR probably. <laughs> Timeout. Going to come out. Timeout. Coach Renolette. I have a word with the home plate umpire. Coach Singer calls his hitter down to third base, Brevin Williams. Patchies, five in the first, one in the second, two in the fifth for their eight. Eight runs, seven hits, and one air for the Rams. One run in the first, one in the second, three in the fifth. Five runs, five hits, no errors for the Rams. BR set his piece. <laughs> Three balls in one strike. There goes the runner. Pitch you up and in. Ball four. Schooley down to second. Brevin Williams on with the walk. Going down in the Rams bullpen. I believe it's Alex Shoblin. Going to bring up Eli Schinniger. Cleanup hitter. Schinniger walked and scored in the first. Had an RBI single in the second. And struck out in the fourth. Coach Brent Reynolds is going to make the long trip out to the mound. Have a conversation with Eli Plasman. And that's going to be it for <laughs> Plasman. It is. We'll be back with the pitching change and any other changes right after this message here on Tenor Rams Live. Who couldn't use an extra 3000 or 2000 mm, Okay. How about 1000 or even 500 Those are the top four prizes of the most recent Tenora Athletic Boosters fundraiser. Tickets are $10 each or 6 for 50 Get a ticket at any Tenora home game. Just visit a booster member or go to our Facebook page at Tenora Athletic Boosters. The drawing will be held after 2,000 tickets are sold for a spring sports drawing. The Athletic Boosters is a nonprofit organization that supports the Tenora athletes, coaches, and athletic facilities. The Boosters' support has shown many ways, including volunteering time, raising money, and contributing funds to better enhance the Rams team's or organization's performance. Yearly and lifetime memberships are available. That's the Tenora Rams Athletic Boosters, who are a proud sponsor of Tenora Sports and Tenora Rams Live. Northwest Ohio Sports is the place for sports rankings, news, scores, podcasts, and more for area athletics. Check them out at Northwest Ohio Sports on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Back here at Fairview High School, it's eight to five. Fairview threatening it to threatening to add more. Hunter Bosselman or uh, Alex Shoplin will be the fourth pitcher to work. Radzik started, went the first two thirds of an inning. Bosselman went three and a third. Plasman worked just a third of an inning, and now Bosselman becomes the fourth Rams pitcher to work here tonight. Coach Rollett drawing all straws out here. He said this is one of the more inexperienced Rams teams with just three seniors back. Graduated class like Tenora has the last three or four years. And you're eventually going to have a season where nothing seems to go right. Rams, like you said, they're coming in at six and one. First loss was Tuesday at Wayne Trace. And Rams can ill afford a second GMC loss here tonight. One loss is enough in the GMC this year if Wayne Trace clear favorites. And he would get two losses in the GMC and your GMC championship uh, aspirations are out the window. One out here in the bottom of the fifth. Fairview with two runners on. Okay, Eli. Eli Schinniger steps in. Oh. 
Choblin looks at the runners from the stretch. First pitch to Eli Schinniger is up and in. Ball one. Schooley on a second. Colton Schooley. Brevin Williams on at first. Eli Schinniger at the dish. Pitch. Tap foul. Third base side. In between Taryn Ward and Coach Singer. Coach Singer's like, I'm not touching that. So Taryn scoops it up, fires it back to Shoblin on the mound. Shoblin, seven innings pitched. This is yet to allow an earned run. Five hits, four walks, and six strikeouts. One one pitches called a strike on the outside corner. One ball and two strikes. Still one out here in the fifth inning game. About two hours and ten minutes old <laughs> to some, including BR. Probably feels like three hours and ten minutes. Throw back to second base. Radzik cuts in behind the runner. Schoolie's back safe. One ball, two strikes to Schinniger. One out. Shoblin, long look in, gets a sign from Wolfram. Looks back at the runner, Schooley at second. Sets. Pitches. Tapper, third base side. Ward scoops it up. Runs to the bag at third. Steps on it for the force out. That retires Schooley. So Schooley is out. Fred Williams goes down to second. And Eli Schinniger is on at first on the fielder's choice. Five unassisted. Jackson Grine going to step in with runners at first and second. Grine, RBI single in the first. Flew out to Mosier and left in the second and struck out in the fourth. Pitch. Spins Grine out of the way. That's ball one. Now it's just 1-0 <laughs> pitch by Bossom when the grinds call a strike. Come on, Jax. It's going. 1-1 <laughs> <laughs> pitch to grind. Swan on. Popped in the air behind the plate. Wolfram underneath it now. Comes in front of the wind again. Pushes that ball back. Luckily for Wolfram and the Rams, it landed in foul territory. Grind stays alive. That's the second or third time we've seen that here. Second for sure. Oh, swing, Jack. Come on, you got it. One ball, two strikes to grind. Runners at first and second for the Apaches. They lead eight to five here in the bottom of the fifth. That's close. Pitch swung on, hit deep shortstop. Radzik scoops it up. Throw across. In time. Nice play deep in the hole by Caden Radzik. 6-3 on the putout. Nice scoop over there by Morlock as well. That finally retires the Apaches, an inning that seemed to last forever. They score two runs. They do so on the home run by Lajway. That was a two-run homer. That was the only hit in the inning. No Ram errors. Two left on base. The Apaches have left. Nine runners on. They've left two runners on the last four innings. After five innings of play here at Fairview High School on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard, Fairview 8 and Tenora 5 will have an update on the Lady Rams right after this. Clubhouse Pizza in A is your small town alternative for happy food at a happy place. Featuring one of the area's best pizzas, Clubhouse Pizza in A will not disappoint. Wing Wednesdays, buffets on Thursday, happy hour on Friday. That's just a few of the things. Clubhouse Pizza in A asks for specials. Stop out after the game for amazing food, great drinks, and an awesome atmosphere. Hours of operation are Wednesday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. and 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. Or order some takeout at 419-658-2720. Come by for a visit at 210 East Main Street. 
Street in Nang. Or check them out on Facebook at Clubhouse Pizza in Nang. Rachel and Jason Gilliam and the great staff at Clubhouse Pizza in Nang are proud supporters of the Rams. Back here at the reservation at Fairview High School. It's 8-5. to five. We have a new pitcher. Shortstop comes in to pitch Elijah Aaron. Well, coming in relief of Jackson Grind. So for Aaron, we'll look up his numbers. Aaron has pitched six innings. Struck out 13, has yet to allow a run or an earned run. So Aaron will come from short and to pitch. Lady Rams fall one to nothing. Fairview played the run in the bottom of the ninth inning to defeat Tenora one to nothing. What a heartbreaker for Coach Fairchild and the Lady Rams over there at the softball complex. Grace Brown let off the ninth with a double. She scored on a wild pitch for a walk-off win. Rasisa and Zolman both went the distance. Fairview moves to 3-0 in the GMC, while the Lady Rams fall to 2-1. That is from Shane from the Crescent News. So Fairview moves to 3-0. Lady Rams fall to 2-1. A heartbreaking loss. Ball got behind Tanae Smith, the runner. Scored from third, Gracie Brown. BJ <laughs> Morlock. Going to step in for Tenora. Rams trail week to five here in the top of inning number six. Aaron's first pitch leans Morlock back out of the way. BJ singled back through the middle in the fourth inning. As fielder's choice in the second. Aaron winds it up. Pitch to Morlock. BJ swings, fouls it off first base side. Grind now moved over to first base. Can't get there. The ball hits the top of the Rams dugout. Seven, eight, nine. Morlock. Osselman and Gus Weiler to face Aaron here. Aaron winds it up. His 1-1 to B.J. Morlock inside ball two. It's one of those games where Coach Singer and, and B.R. Coach Bernalette Oh. Morlock swings, hits a deep left field. Back goes to the left fielder. Can't make the play. Morlock round second. It's going to go in with a stand-up double. Morlock drives a deep left field. Left fielder back there, Brevin Williams, just couldn't get there in time, so Morlock drives it deep. Over the head of Williams for a leadoff double to start the Rams' sixth inning. Rams trail by three, eight to five. Shoblin steps in, or Bosselman. Bosselman steps in. Turn around second, Morlock, nobody out. Aaron from the stretch. Pitch high and away. Snagged out there by Schooley. <laughs> Bailey Schooley, that is. He said lots of schoolies and shinnegers in the dugout for the Apaches on the field as well. <laughs> Morlock leads a second. Aaron, long look in. Looks back at Morlock again. 1 0 pitch coming to Bosselman. Outside. Ball two. Like I said earlier, Eric looks so young. He looks like he's like in junior high. He plays a heck of a shortstop out there. I can see why Coach Singer starts the freshman shortstop. Now he's on the hill. 2 0 pitch. Two Bosselman, Aaron throws it outside. Ball three. Three balls and no strikes to Hunter Bosselman. Rams cut it to 6-5 to five last inning. Lajoie deposited one over the center field fence for a two-run homer to increase the lead to 8-5. to five. Morlock has led off the sixth here with a double. He's at second. 3-0 pitch coming from Aaron DeBosselman is a strike. Gus Weiler on deck for Tenora. 
Yes, you're all agree. Those two teams, it's nowhere in Fairview, Lady Rams softball. Probably meet again down the line. What a heck of a game. Three one pitch to Bosselman. Check swing, stays a little bit high and out. Whoa, he called that a strike. I don't think that's been a strike all night, but count goes full to Bosselman. Three balls, two strikes. Aaron from the set. Pops it. Third base side in fair territory. Grabbing it on the line is the third baseman, June Schinniger. Huge out there. Out number one to retire Bosselman. I'm going to bring up number nine here, Rams center fielder Grady Gusweiler. Winds have died down just a little bit, but not much. Don't have like the gust like we had early on. Sun's still out. There's still not a cloud in the sky. Still fantastic <laughs> middle of April day here in Ohio. My phone still says 80. Aaron's pitch to Gusweiler. Check swing. Strike called. No balls. One strike. One out. Morlock with a leadoff double still at second. Rams trail by three as they bat here in the sixth. <laughs> Make it this game in before the sun goes down. <laughs> Pitch to Gus Weiler. I think I was home from Wayne Trace on Tuesday at this time. <laughs> if not, I was pretty close. On 7.30. One ball, one strike, one out. Aaron on in relief of grind. Comes set. Pitches to Grady. Inside, the ball goes off the glove of Schooley. Down to third base goes Morlock. It's actually a pass ball more than anything. Two balls, one strike to Gus Weiler. Morlock's at third. Rams trail by three here as he bat to sixth. Aaron's pitch. Ground ball deep, shortstop side. Shortstop bobbles it, recovers it. Don't make a throw. That was June Schinniger. Now it's shortstop for the Apaches. Scoring is Morlock to cut the lead to eight to six. Speedy Gus Weiler on at first. E6, RBI for Grady. Top of the lineup, Aiden Mosier steps in for Tenora. Grady always a threat to go. Decent lead over there. Mosier, two runs scored, stolen base. First pitch to Aiden is called a strike. Mosier, two for three. Came in batting 316. Put some numbers on that. Swings. Infield. Fly to the shortstop. And he puts that one away. So Schinniger snags the soft pop off the bat of Mosier for out number two. Remember up Caden Radzik. Radzik with an RBI double in the first. Walked in the score to run in the fifth. It's eight to six. Rams trail by two here in the top of the sixth. Gus Weiler on at first. Aaron on relief of Jackson Grind. Throw over Gus Weiler. I guess no throw. Fake throw. Gus Weiler's back. Freshman Aaron started the shortstop. Played a fantastic shortstop out there. Now on in relief. Freshman righty. Looks over at the runner. Gus Weiler at first. Comes to the plate. Radzik swings and misses. Strike one to Caden. Caden 417 entering the contest. One for two with an RBI. <laughs> Gus Weiler leads it first. Aaron from the stretch. 
It is 0-1. Gus Weiler going back to the bag as the pitch was gone. Pitch is a ball. One ball, one strike. Game approaching two and a half hours long. Aaron looks over at Gus Weiler at first. Grady leads away. There he goes. Pitch off the back of Caden Razek. Could hear that one. Pittsburgh Sioux could hear that one in Pittsburgh. So Caden hit right square in the back. Trots down the first base. Gus Weiler was going on the pitch. Is on at second. One thing Caden uh, seems to lead the team in is hit by pitch. And that's his third of the season, which leads the team in hit by pitch. Last year, I think Caden was hit like 12 times. Not something you want to lead the team in. Gonna bring up Alex Shoblin. Runners at first and second. More ducks on the pond for the Rams. They trail by two here in the sixth. Eight to six. Aaron from the stretch. Pitches to Shoblin, swung on. Fouls it over the first base dugout foul. Shoblin laid down the button the first to get Radzik the third. He did not score. Struck out in the third and scored in the fifth. Shoblin steps out. Aaron steps off. Runners go back to the bases. I like press reset and do it all over again. No balls, one strike to Shoblin. Runners lead. Aaron's pitch, swung on, drilled right back through the middle, scooping it up. Second base, Coden Schooley, heck of a play by Schooley, retires the Rams here in the sixth. Nice play out there by Schooley. I thought that was ticketed for center field. He stepped on the bag for out three. In the inning, the Rams get one run. They threatened to add more. Just couldn't get that hit there. Did so on one hit. No errors. Rams leave 2-1 base. Heading to the bottom of the sixth inning here at Fairview. Drop zone pizzeria scoreboard says Fairview 8 and Tenora 6. The Ann Stevens Body Shop is your number one voted auto collision repair facility in Northwest Ohio. We have recently built a brand new state-of-the-art 20,000 square foot body shop along with a 2,500 square foot addition to our paint shop. This includes a brand new eco-friendly paint booth that is top of the line. At Ann Stevens, we use the latest and newest technology the industry has to offer. We are your experts on all makes and models of vehicles and are the only Chrysler, Ford, and GM certified collision repair facility in Northwest Ohio. Give us a call today at 419-497-3111 to schedule your free estimate or stop by and visit us in downtown Jewel, Ohio. Matt and Stevens Body Shop would like to wish all teams good luck this season. Northwest Ohio Sports is the place for sports rankings, news, scores, podcasts, and more for area athletics. Check them out at Northwest Ohio Sports on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Back to the action on Tenora Rams Sports Live. Heading to the bottom of the sixth inning. Eight runs, seven hits, three errors for the Apaches. For the Rams, six runs, five hits, and no errors for Tenora. Around the Rams infield, Trent Wimpkin checks into the game. He'll be at first base. Your battery will be Shoblin and Dalton Wolfram. So Trent Wimpkin is on at first. Luke Harris is at second. Radzik is at short. Taron Ward is at third. Rams out field. Mosier still in left. Gus Weiler still in center and in right. I believe Connor Wolfram has checked back in. Connor started the game and exited once Caden Radzik was taken out of the pitching role. So Radzik went to short and Harris, who started it short, went to right, and Connor exited. So now Wolfram re-enters in right field. Be the second inning of work for Alex Shoblin. Shoblin is the fourth inner inning, fourth, fourth pitcher to work. Pitch two thirds of an inning. In the bottom of the fifth. June Schinniger, Abram Schinniger, and Bailey Schooley, the first three. First pitch is a ball. Pitch number two is also a ball. Schinniger 
walked and scored in the first, flew out in the second, and walked in the fourth. 2 0 pitch. Strike called. Of all the battles these two coaches have had, this is probably one they will not talk about too much, at least not as of yet. We have a thrilling ending here coming up, but the game is two and a half hour old. Pitch is swung on, drilled in the gap. To the wall it goes in right center field. Wolfram over there to field it, fires it back in. But not before. June Schoeniger has a leadoff double for the Apaches to start their bottom of the sixth. Going to bring up Abram Schoeniger. Going to have a brief conversation with his coach. No, oh, actually, Coach Singer have a pinch runner or something, maybe. See what we got here. So Lady Rams lose 1-0 in the bottom of the ninth inning. Here, Rams trail 8 to 6 in the bottom of the sixth. Yes. <laughs> Coach Singer's making sure the lineup card is right. <laughs> At the plate, it's going to be Abram Schinniger. Schinniger with a huge 3 RBI double in the first. Grounded out to third in the third and struck out looking in the fourth. So Eli also has an RBI. Actually has three. Digs in, bats from the left side. Abram squares around, bunts it right back to the mound. Covering over there is Luke Harris at second. June Schinniger on the sacrifice goes down to second. So that's the first out of the bottom of the sixth. There are Bailey Schooley. Schooley. I'm going to talk briefly with Coach Singer. Runner a second, one out. For the Apaches as they lead by two, eight to six. Have more runs than hits in the game. Seems like. <laughs> if not, it's pretty close. Shotlin from the stretch comes to the plate. First pitch, little blooper. Harris goes out, makes the catch as he falls to his knees. Luke Harris retires Schooley for out number two. Get out of here. Let's go ahead. Two, one. Bring him home. Number nine hitter, Elijah Aaron, steps in. Aaron started the short. Now will be on the mound. Or moved to the mound. Last inning. Elijah. Elijah. Freshman starter for Coach Singer. Runner at third. First pitch swinging, fouls it back out of play, strike one. <laughs> so June Schinniger is on at third with two outs. No balls and one strike is the count to number nine hitter, Elijah Aaron. Shoblin's pitch, high and away. Snagged by Dalton Wolfram. One ball and one strike. 8-6, Apache's lead here as they bat in the bottom of the sixth. Good luck in Shirts and Investments postgame show to follow. Tapper third base side. Ward fields a long throw over to more. Actually, it's not more like anymore. It's Wimpkin in time. Nice play by Karen Ward. 5-3 on the putout for out number three in the inning. Apaches do not score. Leave a runner stranded to the third. No runs for Fairview. Leadoff double by June Schinniger does not plate anything. No Ram errors. And a runner left on base. Fairview has left a runner on base every inning. Ten runners left on base by Coach Singer's uh, Apaches. 
Drop zone Pizzeria scoreboard after six innings of play. It is eight to six. Fairview is on top of the Tenor Rams. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun of Defiance has been serving Northwest Ohio for over 30 years. Need cash? Collateral pawn loans are available. Stop in and see Shar and the staff at 5727 State Route 66 North in Defiance, Ohio. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun carries a full line of new and pre-owned items that include firearms, ammo, optics, game systems, knives, jewelry, and Amish Poly furniture. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun has in-house jewelry as well as a gunsmith on site. Hours of operation are Monday 10 to 7, Tuesday through Friday 10 to 5, and Saturday 9 to 3. Got questions? Give them a call 419-784-9880 or visit them online at woodenindianpawn.com or visit their facebook page wooden indian pawn and gun your locally owned pawn specialists say go rams back here at the reservation at fairview eight six rams trail by two final at bat four five and six ward harrison wolfram to face elijah aaron we said earlier 712 combined wins between coach renolette and coach singer 43 years of coaching 712 combined wins between these two coaches, and I believe they're pretty good friends as well. Graham's coming at 6-1, 1-1 and one, one and one in the GMC. Fairview comes in at 5-4, and 1-1 one and one in the GMC. Graham's last year were 21-6. And, six. and a three-way tie was their fifth consecutive GMC title. Last year, Fairview won the junior Acme tournament, state tournament. Coach Singer, 20th season, 319 wins for Coach Singer. So my pregame notes that sometimes I mention, sometimes I forget. So I think I've got plenty of time here tonight. Might as well run through, pretty much run through everything that I have. The game's over three and a half hours old. You pretty much run through about every little tidbit of information that you have. Like I said, sometimes I print out a lot of information. You know, tonight's one of those nights where it kind of pays off. So here it is eight to six. Patchy's up by two. I was trying to look through some other scores and see what I could come up with. But like I said, Twitter for baseball is hit and miss. Sometimes you get a lot, sometimes you don't get any. Football, you don't have trouble finding anything. Aaron winds it up, fires to Ward. First pitch to Taryn is outside. Ball one. Grind started with the first five innings, gave up six hits and five runs. First, or the second pitch to work is outside ball two. Aaron's second inning will work. 2 0 pitch to Ward. That is ball three. Ryan struck out five in his five innings of work. Pitched 98 pitches, walked just one. Pitch to Ward is called a strike. Three balls and one strike to Taryn Ward. I'm just going to guess, but I'm sure it's about 250 pitches between both teams here tonight. Ward serves it in to... Left field, a solid base hit, makes a wide turn. It's going to wind up holding at first base. No reason to get an out when you don't need one, trailing by two. So Ward starts the Rams seventh with a single. Luke Harris steps in for Tenora. Harris singled and had an RBI in his last at bat in the fifth. Luke came in leading the team with a 429 average. Digs in from the right side of the plate. Ward on at first. Aaron from the stretch. Comes to the plate. Pitch to Harris. It is called a strike. Aaron, long look in. Ward, short lead at first. Aaron still looks in. Gets a sign from Schooley. Now he steps off. About 7.30 here. Got about another half hour of decent sunlight here. Pitch to the plate. Harris. I don't know how it missed him. <laughs> I 
thought I actually hit Luke in the back, but it didn't. Somehow missed him. One ball, one strike to Luke. Lord on at first. Rams trail eight to six. Here's a bat at the top of the seventh. Aaron just a sign from the stretch. 1-1 one, one pitch to Harris. Harris laces it into left field. Back to back single. Ball gets through. Heads to the wall. Ward hits the bag. BR says score. Harris hits second. He stops there. Rams trail 8-7. to seven. Tying run at second with nobody out. Ward scores on the air. Harris with a single. Air on the left fielder. Luke trotted down to second. Reverend Williams came in to field it and somehow ball just got through. Went all the way to the fence. He had to chase her down, allowing Ward to score all the way from first. Harris the tying run on its second. Rams trail eight to seven. Dalton Wolfram steps in. See if BR wants to sacrifice Harris over to third. I'm assuming that's a yes. Right. Let's go, Long look in again by Aaron. Wolfram digs in. Aaron's pitch to Dalton. Okay. He's swinging away. Hits it through the hole into left field. Harris hits the bag. BR says stay right here. Runners at first and third. Still nobody out. Harris stopped at third by BR. Dalton singled it. All three hits right in the same exact spot. Timeout. Head coach Andy Singer is going to come out and talk to his freshman, Elijah Aaron. Three straight hits, basically all in the same spot through the third base shortstop hole. Eight to seven, Rams trail by one here in the top of the seventh. Have the go-ahead run at first, the tying run at third. Seven runs, six hits. No errors, at least the scoreboard says. Eight runs, seven hits, three errors for the Apaches. Rams trail by one. Coach BR has his runners, Wolfram at first and Harris down talking to both of them. BG Morlock will be the hitter of the hour for the Rams. <laughs> Coach Singer is going to stick with Aaron. I'm black. Hey, I'm I'm black. Trots back to the dugout. In that shortstop will be Jude Schoeninger already played shortstop. So he's been in there since Aaron came in the mound. There's a change somewhere, but everybody looks the same. B.J. Morlock at the plate with nobody out. Tying run, Luke Harris at third. Winning run at first and Dalton Wolfram. Aaron on the mound for the Apaches. Long look in, gets the sign from Schooley. Pitch to BJ. Outside to the backstop it goes. Harris on his horse, scores the tying run. Harris down at third, raced all the way to tie the game at eight. Wolfram at second. This is the go ahead run. We are tied at eight here at Fairview. Who would have thought? <laughs> I think at one time BR was just ready to hop on the bus and leave himself. Morlock can give the Rams the lead here. 1-0 count to BJ. Here comes the pitch. Swung on! Hit to second base. That's going to get the runner over to third. Morlock throws in the dirt scooped out by Grind over there, but Morlock does his job. That's exactly what BR wanted him to do. Wolfram goes down to third with one out. So Morlock, the first out, ground ball of the second base, four to three on the put out, hits it to the opposite way. So I'm an old school baseball player, outside of a single to the right fielder. That's perfect baseball. It's going to bring up Hunter Bosselman can give the Rams the lead here. You're tied at eight here in the top of the seventh. Aaron on the mound. Elijah gets the sign, looks at the runner at third. Pitch outside. You know what BR likes to do here, see what side squeeze. 
Coach Singer knows that, unfortunately. <laughs> so this is a chess match. One ball, no strike, one out. Boston wanted to dish. Pitch is low and away, ball two. Two balls, no strikes. On deck, Grady Gusweiler. Rams have battled back to tie it at eight here in the top of the seventh. Aaron gets the sign, Wolfram at third, stays there. Swung on, driven, deep right field. Over the head of the right field, Wolfram's going to score to give the Rams a lead. Bosselman hits first, rounds the bag. He heads to second with an RBI double. The Rams have grabbed a nine to eight lead. Wow. Coach Singer's going to, he's pulling his hair out in there. <laughs> Gus Weiler, the number nine hitter, Ram center fielder, will step to the plate. Grady, 0 for 3, reached on an error in the sixth. <laughs> Going to have a pinch runner out there. Connor Wolfram will be pinch running at second. Rams lead 9-8, to eight, have scored three here in the seventh. Come on, defense! Gus Weiler digs in, Aaron on the mound from the stretch. Sweels does not throw as Connor Wolfram, the pinch runner, scampers back to second base. Ward started the rally. Harris singled, Wolfram singled, three straight singles here in the seventh. All three of those scored to give the Rams a 9-8 lead here. Still only one out. Rams really need that runner at second base to score. Pitch to Grady is called a strike. No balls, one strike, one out. Wolfram leads from second. Gus Weiler digs in from the right side of the plate. Aaron from the stretch looks back at Wolfram a second comes to the plate pitch to Grady is low and away nice stop by Schooley back there both these backstops have definitely got to work out tonight <laughs> Bailey Schooley and uh, Dalton Wolfram Aaron's 1-1 one, one coming to Gus Weiler big lead by Wolfram a second <laughs> Pitch to Grady's up and in. Ball two. Two balls. One strike to Grady Gusweiler. On deck, top of the lineup, Aiden Mosier. <laughs> Grady digs back in. Aaron looks back at Connor Wolfram at second. 2 1 pitch coming to Gusweiler. Swung on. Fouled off first base side out of play. <laughs> Wolfram goes back to second. Gus Weiler looks down at BR. 2-2 pitch will be coming from Aaron. <laughs> Aaron says, go through the signs again. Schoolie's like, man, we're all starving and hungry. <laughs> we want to go ask pizza somewhere. <laughs> Two balls, two strikes, one out. Schooley still looking in. Gus Weiler digs back in. Wolfram leads from second. Aaron to the plate. Pitch off the glove. Bailey Schooley can't find the ball. Down to third base goes Connor Wolfram. So Wolfram is on at third. Ball went off Schooley's glove. He couldn't find it. Count to Grady is three balls and two strikes. Still one out here. Rams have played at three, lead nine to eight. In the longest high school baseball game ever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it seems like at least. <laughs> as long as the Rams win, I don't think anybody cares how long it goes, but it's starting to get run out of daylight here. Pitch to Gus Weiler, swung on and missed. Down goes Grady for out number two. Wolfram on at third. That's a huge insurance run out there. Aiden Mosier 
going to dig in from the left side of the plate. Third baseman playing even with the bag. Aiden could put down a bunt down there on the third baseline. Connor Wolfram leads from third. Pitch to Mosier is inside for a strike. Put the little high and inside. BR turns. BR is frustrated with the home plate umpire tonight. Had a conversation or two already. 01 pitch to Mosier. That one's definitely a ball. Ball one. Count evens. One ball, one strike, two outs. Rams lead 9 8 here in the top of the seventh inning. I'm not going to have a voice when this is over. Mosier fouls it back this way. Out of play. Lady Rams softball over here, cheering on the boys. Heck of a heartbreaking loss for the Lady Rams. Lost one to nothing in nine innings, but they're over here cheering on the boys. That's awesome of them. One, two, pitch. Coming to Mosier. Wolfram at third. Pitch. Swung on, hit shallow left field. That falls in. Seeing high single into shallow left field. Mosier with an RBI single scores. Connor Wolfram, the pinch runner, to give the Rams a 10 8 lead. Four runs here in the seventh. Rams lead 10 8. Elijah. Caden Radzik steps in. Radzik. There goes Mosier. Throw down. Not in time. Mosier with a stolen base. Second tonight. Ninth overall in the season for Aiden. So Radzik with a runner in scoring position now. In a game like this, you, know, you want to get all the runs you can get. No balls. One strike. To count to Radzik. Aaron. Comes set. Pitches to Radzik. A little bit outside. Backhanded by Schooley. One ball. One strike. Two outs. Top of the seventh. Rams with a four spot. Lead 10-8. Radzik asks for time. He steps out. Radzik's 1-1 one, one, driven deep. One hops the wall off the 340 sign. S scoring is Mosier for the fifth run. Radzik with the shot to left center. RBI double for Caden. Coach Singer is going to head to the mound, and that's going to be all for his freshman Aaron. We're going to take a timeout and be back right after this here on Tenor and Live. Looking for home or auto insurance? What about building for retirement? Or looking to start a small investment portfolio for your family? Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services of Defiance has you covered. Tim Bidlack of Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services has over 10 years of investment experience. Tim can assist in estate planning, IRAs, 401k investments, among other financial planning areas. Need home or auto insurance? Welcome Austin Bidlack. He can assist you on those. At Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services, they will work one-on-one -on -one with you to make sure your home, auto, and business are protected. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services are located at 912 East 2nd Street in Defiance. Call Tim or Austin at 419-438-0023 today for a free quote. You can visit them online or on their Facebook page as well. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services wish the best to all the Tenor Rams athletes this season. 
Uh, welcome back to Fairview High School. The Rams have scored five runs here in the seventh inning to take an 11-8 lead over the Apaches. B.J. Morlock heads down to the bullpen for the Rams. So see what's up in the bottom of the seventh inning. Radzik leads away at second. Shoblin at the dish for the Rams. Actually, Aaron still stays out there. So there was no pitching change. Coach Singer just went out to have a long conversation with his freshman, Elijah Aaron. 11 runs, 13 hits for the Rams. No errors. Eight runs, nine hits, four errors for the Apaches. Pitch to Shoblins high and away. That's a ball. One ball, one strike. Still two out here. Radzik on at second. Aaron looks back at Radzik as he leads away. Pitch coming. A little shot off the handle. Grind comes on, snags it to retire the side for Tenora. Finally, the third out for the Apache, says Coach Singer. That's four unassisted. Rams do some damage here in the seventh. They score five runs, and they do so on... All week long, it's a farm and town. Six hits, one error, and the Rams leave one on base after six and a third inning, or six and a half innings, to North 11. My, my brain is spent, along with everybody else's body and mind here. It is Tenora 11, Fairview 8 on the Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard. Stay tuned. We're going to have the exciting finish coming up right after this here on Tenora Rams Live. Drop Zone Pizzeria in Ayersville and Stryker offers the area's best pizza, wings, subs, and calzones. In fact, Drop Zone Pizzeria was voted the area's best pizza in 2020 and again for 2022. From pickle pizza to pilot bread to grandma pizza, Drop Zone Pizzeria is always looking outside the pizza box for something special for their fantastic customers. Order by calling in Ayersville at 419-395-2525 or in Stryker at 419-990-2525. Hours of operation close Monday, Tuesday through Thursday, and Sunday, 4 to 8 p.m., Friday and Saturday till 9. Drop Zone Pizzeria now with two locations, downtown Ayersville at 13995 Fruit Ridge Road and also at 301 South Defiant Street in downtown Stryker. Stop in at the Stryker location for a bite of ice cream. Visit them on Facebook at the Drop Zone Pizzeria where online ordering is available. And remember, the Drop Zone Pizzeria says go Rams. Back at the reservation here at Fairview High School, Rams with five and the seventh, having an 11 to eight lead. Who would have thought? Coach Renolette is going to stick with his sophomore Alex Shoblin. B.J. Morlock was warming up late in that seventh inning. But B.J. stays on or comes back on to play first base. Morlock at first. Harris at second. Razik at short. Ward at third. Outfield. Mosier in left. Gusweiler in center. And Connor Wolfram in right. Lajway Takes the first pitch by Radzik down the line. He hits first. He's going to go for two. Throw not in time. Lajaway, who started last inning with a two-run homer, starts this inning with a single or double inside the bag at third. Who would have expected anything less? Rank number two hitter, Colton Schooley. I think we may run out of daylight if this game goes too much longer. Approaching the 8 o'clock hour. The game's almost three hours old. Colton Schooley digs in. Runner at second. Nobody out. Rams with a three-run lead. First pitch to Schooley is outside for a ball. And shout out to Lady Rams over here cheering on the boys team. Heartbreaking loss for them in nine innings. One nothing loss. Pitch to Schooley is a strike. Town evens one ball, one strike. Nobody out. Rams lead by three. Bottom of the seventh inning. One, two, three, and four for the Apaches. Lasway already doubled. Schooley's up. Pitch to him. Somehow the ball was in the dirt and missed him. I thought he it looked like it was going to hit him right in the knee. 
but I missed it. Schooly, two walks, two runs, one hit and two at bats. Officials, two at bats. 2 1 pitch. That's low. Scooped up by Wolfram. Fires down to second. Almost threw it in the center field. Razik with the save. Three balls and one strikes to count to Colton Schooley. Revan Williams is on deck. BR pacing the dugout, wearing off the cement on the first base side. Coach Singer coaching at third. He probably did the same last inning in his dugout on the third base side. 3-1 pitch from Shoblin to Schooley in the side corner for a strike. Count goes full. 3-2. and two. This is a huge pitch coming up here in this contest. An 11-8 game. Who would say it's a huge pitch, but it is. Here it comes. Swung on and fouled back. Count stays full at 3-2. and two. Sun now in all shadows. We said the sun's gonna set very fast here. Three two pitch coming. High and inside. Ball four. Schooly down the first base. First two Apaches have reached with nobody out. Revan Williams is gonna step in. Williams. Two walks has a hit. And his two official at-bats, he bats from the right side, as Coach Singer wants to do here. Going to butt him over and let him hit. Pitch is high and away. BR now, he's thinking about it. Here he comes. He asks for time. He's going to come out to the mound. <laughs> I think we've seen BR head more times to the mound tonight than they have in the last year or two. So the Rams lead 11 to 8. We are going to have a pitching change. BJ Morlock, I believe, will enter, and we'll be back right after this. The Fired Stone Tavern in Defiance is anything but basic. In 2021, the Fired Stone Tavern was voted to have the best pizza in the area. Now, in 2022, they've been voted as the best burgers around. Fired Stone Tavern is the area's go-to for wood-fired pizza, amazing appetizers, and so much more. Chef Aaron and his staff are here to serve nothing but the best. No plans after the big game? Stop out for ice-cold drinks and all the games on TV you can ask for. Our back room and patio are available for events like birthdays, corporate lunches, parties, and much, much more during the week with a 25-person minimum. Located at 211 Carpenter Road at the Eagle Rock Golf Course. The hours of operation are Monday through Friday, 2 p.m. to 11 p.m. And Saturday and Sunday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Give the Fired Stone Tavern a call, 419-785-4015, or order online at firestonetavern.com. Firestone Tavern wishes the best to all the Tenora teams. All right, back here at Fairview, B.J. Morlock enters. Morlock, two innings pitched on the season, has not allowed a hit, a run, a walk, and he struck out three, so Morlock... I'm going to throw him right into the frying pan here. Rams lead 11 to 8. Fairview's first two batters have reached here in the bottom of the seventh yeah. inning as the daylight is just burning away here. We probably have at most 15 minutes, if that. So it's all do or die here. If this game's suspended, obviously they'll come back and finish it. It's not going to end just because it's too dark. But Brevin Williams is going to take. A 1-0 count against Rams junior righty B.J. Morlock. Lashaway started the inning with a leadoff double. Schooley walked, and after one pitch to Revan Williams, B.R. has seen enough. I think B.R. has seen enough of this game tonight. And Morlock is in relief here. Morlock will become, goodness gracious, this is about like the fifth pitcher. Fifth pitcher. Radzik started. Bosselman came on in relief. Plasman came on. And then Shoblin. And now B.J. Morlock. 11 runs, 13 hits, no errors for the Rams. Eight runs, 10 hits, four errors for the Apaches. Morlock inherits that 1-0 count to number three hitter Brevin Williams here. Morlock from the set comes to the plate. Pitches in the dirt. Follows the runners to advance to 
Second and third. Lajaway down to third. Schooley down to second. Scoop off the mid of Dalton Wolferman. One into the air about 12 feet. So two balls and no strikes to Brevin Williams. Morlock from the set. Pitches inside corner, strike, one call. Two balls, one strike, nobody out here. Three run lead for the Rams. They scored five in the seventh. Rams have scored nine runs in the last three innings to grab a three run lead here. Morlock's pitch. Just a bit low. Three balls and one strike. Looked to be in the same exact spot as the last pitch. Tides a turning here in favor of the Apaches. 3-1 count to Brevin Williams. Great two called. Count goes full. Three and two to Williams. Apaches have runners at second and third. They trail by three here in the bottom of the seventh. Pitch is low, ball four, that loads him up. Brevin Williams goes down the first on the back-to-back -back walk. It's going to bring up Eli Schinniger, then Jackson Grind to follow. Schinniger is going to step in. Eli, three official at-bats, has a hit, an RBI, a walk, and is also struck out. So Schinniger digs in with the bases juiced. Morlock from the stretch. Comes to the plate. First pitch driven to center field. Gus Weiler makes a super catch out there for out number one. Tagging and scoring is Lajaway, but Grady, I think he took a step back, spun, come in, went to a knee, put the fly ball away for out number one. And if you're going to make an adventure in center field, probably you don't want anybody out there but Grady because more times than not, he's going to haul it in. So that's the first out. Runners remain at first and second. Two outs now, or one out now, I'm sorry. One out now, Jackson Grind. The meat of the order here, Jackson Grind against B.J. Morlock. Morlock sets, fires, pitch, strike. One called. Grind four at bats. Has a hit, a run, and an RBI, and has struck out. Morlock sets. 0-1 coming to grind. Swung on, fouled back. It's almost like uh, the Masters, all of a sudden everything got quiet. <laughs> Morlock set and was like, where'd all the crowd? It was like, shh. Not playing tennis. Or we're not on hole 18. Morlock's ahead of grind. No balls and two strikes. Runners at first and second for the Apaches. They trail by two. Morlock sets. Pitch inside. One and two to grind. Winds died down considerably here as the evening has worn on and the sun's starting to set here at Fairview. BJ's one, two to Jackson grind. High and inside. Count evens at two balls and two strikes. Got to be at work. It's 3.15 in the morning. Hopefully we get home soon. <laughs> Turn on the lights over here at the football field. Two and two pitch to grind. Swan on foul back. On deck, June Schinninger. Hopefully we do not see Abram Schinninger. He's in the hole. Brian takes a deep breath. Jackson digs back in. Senior bats from the right side. Two balls, two strikes, one out here. Batches have scored one to cut it to 11 to nine. Have runners at first and second. Morlock on in relief from the stretch. 2-2 two -two pitch coming from Morlock to grind. Swung on and missed. Strike three. Morlock got grind to chase one high and away for out number two. Going to bring up June Schinniger. Schinniger. Walk twice. Got a hit. <laughs> Digs in against Morlock. Runner still at first and second. 11-9 Rams lead by two. 
Sophomore lock sets. The righty comes set, pitch swung on and fouled back, strike one. Not a good thing Bert and Ojenna are not here and they're loving this thriller out through social media. <laughs> Looking through a camera of a fence while their son's trying to close out this game versus Fairview. <laughs> no balls, one strike. Morlock sets runners lead from first and second. Morlock falls off the mound, and that's going to be a balk. That's going to put runners at second and third. So the tying runners are in scoring position now on the balk. Schooley at third, Brevin Williams at second at the dish is June Schinniger, no balls and one strike, two outs. Coach Renolette going to go out there and say, what did he do? Please tell me. <laughs> I think BR just talked to the umps more than he wanted to tonight so far. <laughs> Sun's a setting here. This is definitely the last inning we're playing. So hopefully we get out of this mess. 11 9. Rams lead by two. Tying runs at second and third for Fairview. No balls and one strike to count to June Schinniger. Morlot sets his pitch. Swung on and missed. Strike two. Come on, BJ. Fairview down to their last strike. As the sun is setting by the second here at Fairview High School. 0-2, oh, two, two outs, tying runs at second and third. Morlock, long look in, gets the sign from Wolfram. Come set, pitch to June Schinniger. Low, nice stop by Dalton Wolfram. Saved a run there. Well, it's starting to cool off once the sun went down here. Maybe 81 in April. But it's not summer, April. It's still early spring. One, two from Morlock. Sets. Looks in. Pitch to June Schinniger. Breaking ball, check swing. Strike three called. Morlock gets out of the mess. Schinniger checked his swing. The umpire said not. Enough, you didn't. Coach Singer not happy. The game mercifully hits with the Rams with an 11-9 victory. And I'm not sure we can recap this, but we'll do the best we can. Rams and B.J. Morlock with a huge 11-9 thrilling win here at Fairview High School. The Rams stay in the thick of things in the GMC, and we'll try and tell you all about it coming up on the Bid Like Insurance on the Best Post Postgame Show. And we'll do it right after this. Looking for home or auto insurance? What about building for retirement? Or looking to start a small investment portfolio for your family? Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services of Defiance has you covered. Tim Bidlack of Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services has over 10 years of investment experience. Tim can assist in estate planning, IRAs, 401k investments, among other financial planning areas. Need home or auto insurance? Welcome Austin Bidlack. He can assist you on those. At Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services, they will work one-on-one -on -one with you to make sure your home, auto, and business are protected. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services are located at 912 East 2nd Street in Defiance. Call Tim or Austin at 419-438-0023 today for a free quote. You can visit them online or on their Facebook page as well. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services wish the best to all the Tenora Rams athletes this season. Wow. That's all that you can really say here as the Rams will come away with an 11-9 victory. Fairview falls to 5-5. Five and five. They are 1-2 in the GMC. Rams improve to 7-1. And, and a huge win here. They go to 2-1 in the GMC. Rams scored in the first inning to grab a 1-0 lead. Fairview, unfortunately, came back to grab 5. They led 5-1 after 1. Welcome to the Bidlack Insurance and Investments postgame show. Second inning, Rams put a single tally up, cut the lead to 5-2. to two. Fairview played another one in their part of the second. They led 6-2. to two. Next two innings, neither team scored. Rams started a rally. They scored three in the fifth to cut the lead to 6-5. to five. And then in the bottom part of the fifth inning, Adam Lajaway drilled a two-run home run in the fifth over the center fielder's head. And the Rams trailed again eight to five. 
Rams with a single telly in the sixth. In the seventh, the Rams bats came alive. Three straight singles started the rally for Tenora. Ward started it, then Harris singled, and then Wolfram singled. All three singled with pretty much the same exact hit through the shortstop third base hole. Hunter Bosselman, the huge double, started the scoring. And it was off and running then. Rams played it five runs. And Fairview came back, of course. Why would the game, the high school game that's lasted over three hours be, you know, exciting and be over instantly in the seventh inning? Of course it wasn't. Fairview with Lajaway came right out, started with a double. The next hitter walked at Colton Schooley. Brendan Williams loaded the bases. B.J. Morlock came on. Got a fly out to center field. Nice catch out there by Grady Gusweiler. Jackson Grind with a strikeout. And June Schinniger with a check swing. Strikeout to end the game. Game three hours and we're going to say about five minutes old. Rams, 11 runs, 13 hits, no errors. And for Fairview, nine runs, 10 hits, and four huge errors for the Apaches. The win... Boy, I'm not even sure who gets the win. It's going to take a while to, to sort that out. Because Radzik started, went uh, two-thirds of an inning. Bosselman came in, picked up a big two or big three in a third innings of relief, allowing just three runs. Shoblin with an inning and two-thirds. Plasman pitched an inning and a third. Caden, like where Radzik started. And then Morlock with an inning, two strikeouts, and a walk, no runs allowed. Threw BJ right into the frying pan, and he definitely came out smelling like a rose. So final, again, here was Rams rallying with a five-run seventh for an 11-9 victory. Coming up, we'll have the Higby Embroidery Player of the Game Award, and we'll do it right after this. Higby Embroidery of Defiance offers custom screen printing and custom embroidery to local high schools and individuals from all areas. Connie Higby and her staff have been serving and supporting Tenora High School as well as the Tri-County area since 1999. From throws to t-shirts to school jackets and much, much more, Higby Embroidery is here to serve your custom needs. Higby Embroidery also offers custom artwork if it is needed to complete your project. Higby Embroidery is located at 1940 East 2nd Street right here in Defiance, Ohio. Contact them at 419 419- 428-3000 or visit them online at Higby.com or Higby Embroidery on Facebook. If you are looking for a customizable item, Higby Embroidery is your place. Higby Embroidery, a proud sponsor of the Tenora Rams Live Player of the Game Award. Welcome back to the Higby Embroidery Player of the Game Award. And boy, oh boy, I mean, I, let me give it to everybody here that waited out this game. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. I think BR wanted to retire about five times during this contest. <laughs> He's about ready to just hand the ropes to Coach Tipton and say, here you go, take her. I'm going to take the bus and I'll be back and pick up the boys when this thing's over. But this is uh, definitely um, post-game that BR usually has a speech afterwards. You kind of wonder where he says because this was just one of those where never say never, don't ever give in. But... Higby Embroidery Player of the Game. We're going to give the B.J. Morlock. Got thrown into the fire and came out with a huge, huge save for Tenora there in the seventh inning. Actually, at the plate, B.J. collected a single and a double. So, but Player of the Game, go to B.J. Morlock. Again, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Thanks, our sponsors, who make all this possible. We appreciate them. BSN Sports, Weber Bookkeeping, Maumee Valley Title Agency, Clubhouse Pizza NA, Fairchild Family Chiropractic Center, Optimal Forest and Fitness, Trap Zone Pizzeria, Higby Embroidery, Signs Excavating, Firestone Tavern, Oklahoma Tavern, Northwest Ohio Sports, Batten Stevens Body Shop, Snow Rams Athletic Boosters, Cut and Polished Hair and Nail Salon, Wooden Indian Pawn Shop, Bidlack Insurance and Investments, Wiener, Hill, Weber, and Stanley Attorneys at Law, Postum Insurance and Investments, and 
Finally, Mech Mayfield Engineering Corporation, $1,000 sign-on bonus. Start your Mech career today. Go to mechcareers.com and submit an application, or you can go down to 21 Seneca Street in the lobby down there and submit an application. Thanks to Roger. Thanks to Pittsburgh Sue. Um, thanks to uh, Carol and everybody who was commenting throughout. Like I say, try and glance down and catch them when I can. And everybody, both Carols, Sarah Harris, Cheryl for updates on the ladies' softball. Uh, heartbreaking loss for the Lady Rams, but I give those girls credit. Coach Fairchild had them girls over here cheering on the boys, so that was awesome to see. They're over here by the third base dugout, and those Lady Rams in a heartbreaking defeat were over here cheering on the boys. So, you know, give Coach Fairchild and Lady Rams for that uh, ninth inning, one nothing loss next door, and they come over here and support the boys. So. You know, can't say enough things about the Lady Rams uh, program and Coach Fairchild. So final here, Tenora with a huge rally. They win 11-9. They go to 2-1 in the GMC, 7-1 overall. Lady Rams, heartbreaking loss next door. They come over here and support, you know, their team. And for Coach Singer, they lose. They fall to 5-5, five 1-2 and five, one and two in the GMC. So for Keith Brown, we'll be back, uh, I believe, Monday the girls are at Springfield tomorrow, and no game Saturday. I don't believe. Well, no, we actually have Saturday softball from Tenora. Um, Ellen East, I think, comes over to play, so we'll see everybody Saturday. And then back Monday, Rams host Wait, I believe, for baseball. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in and hanging with me as my voice goes again. We talk for almost uh, four straight hours. This is what happens. So talk to everybody Saturday. Have a fantastic night, everybody. Thanks for listening to this exclusive presentation of Tenora Rams Sports. Be sure to tune in next time when we bring you more Rams action and follow us online at TenoraRamsSportsAudio.com or on Twitter at Tenora Rams Audio.